It began snowing last night. It continued through most of the night. The wind has been kicking it up, and it's going to increase the snow, they say, Will. The temperature with the wind chill, 11 degrees. But it feels worse. Mike Tomlin in his seventh season. Cold weather last Sunday night against Cincinnati and Pittsburgh. He's greeted by more of it here in northeast Wisconsin. Mike McCarthy, a Pittsburgh boy, high school in the Pittsburgh area. And he is in his eighth season with the Green Bay Packers. Rookie Micah Hyde is deep back as the Packers won the coin toss they have elected to receive, which means that Sean Sweezum will kick off for the Steelers, who beat Cincinnati on Sunday night. And Green Bay with that thriller in Dallas, and away we go in the wind and snow and cold of Green Bay. Micah Hyde will bring it out with a gap and then brought down look like Sweezum the guy that kicked off is the one to trip him up on a 34 yard return all right this takes us to the Green Bay Packer offense led by quarterback Matt Flynn with his seventh career start today he's with his fourth different organization this season he's been with Seattle Oakland Buffalo and now the Green Bay Packers and what he has done he's infused this football team with a greater sense of confidence believing they can win without Aaron Rodgers and I think it has revived his career as well he comes in expecting to play very well today it is a first and ten here comes the rookie Eddie Lacy cutting back there was a block inside by the receiver, Boykin, and a bit of a hole, and it looked like Garvin brought him down after a gain of five. On the offensive line, David Bakhtiari is the only rookie to start left tackle in every game for his team this season. He took the place of the injured Belaga in camp. It's been a success story there. The running back, we just saw him, Eddie Lacy, over 1,000 yards rushing, and receiver Jordy Nelson, 72 catches this year. That is a career high. It's second down and five on the game opening possession. And here comes the Alabama rookie once again, Lacey, out to about the 40. Whacked in the play by a couple. He picks up three right there. Cameron Hayward was leading the way. He is an emerging player, is Hayward on that line. Brett Kiesel starting today. He's missed the last two games with plantar fasciitis. Linebackers, Lawrence Timmons leads him in tackles. Worlds leads him in sacks. And Jarvis Jones will not play today. Got sick last night. He is in the locker room. Ryan Clark, quarterback's the oldest secondary. Cortez Allen starting at left corner. He and William Gay will see equal snaps at that position. It's third down and two for Flynn. And here they come with a great sack. Lawrence Timmons brings him down. Timmons with his second sack coming through. Loss of seven on the play. And the Packers have got a punt. Back at their 32. And what did, of course, Flynn tell us? They had to identify where the blitz was coming from. And there's Timmons. He was lined up at the inside linebacker position. They slid the offensive line to the left. They turned Timmons free. He comes in for the sack. Dick LeBeau getting off to a great start with his defense. Of course, he and Dom Capers each running the same identical zone blitz coverage on the defensive side of the ball. Oh, bad snap to Naste from the long snapper Good. It goes to Antonio Brown and dies on the soft turf. And there are heat coils under here. The field has been covered all night long. A 40-yarder right there. Bad snap by the long snapper Good. Absolutely. Didn't get it back to the punter. You got to get it back so he can get that one off. It's nearly blocked on that play. And well, he does a good job of recovering and getting it off. Great job by Mass Day. And here's 31-year-old quarterback Ben Roethlisberger. First time he has played in Green Bay, having one of, if not the best season so far in his great career. Last five games, Sally, 12 touchdowns, just one pick. And he talked about it. He says, if you're going to play here at Lambeau, it's, it should be this kind of weather. He looks forward to playing in such a legendary place full of tradition. Couple tight ends, one of them in motion right now. That's Miller, first and ten. Avion Bell, the celebrated rookie out of Michigan State, works his way into Shields, into the sideline, and knocked out of bounds. A run of 11. That is a first down. The offensive line has a center in Cody Wallace, the third to start there this season. Right side of the line, DeCastro and Gilbert have started virtually every game, as has Foster, all but one at the other guard position. Antonio Brown, statistically one of the top three receivers, and they really like their running back. You just saw him, Bell, as a runner, a receiver, and as a blocker. He does it all, and he's in there now with the first and ten with Ben Roethlisberger. The wind 
is at the back of the Pittsburgh offense. Outside, that's Miller, and he's brought down by defensive back Morgan Burnett. It is a gain of six on the play. Mike Daniels replaces on that Green Bay defensive line the injured Johnny Jolly, a neck injury. Sends Jolly to IR. Daniels making the start on the line. A.J. Hawk is the leading tackler, closing in on becoming the all-time Packers. Leading tackler could get that today. And in the secondary, Don Capers, a former Pittsburgh coach, changing the defense a couple weeks ago, keeping left corner Tremont Williams. All plays, not just sub packages, but all plays at that left corner with a second and four. They get by the defensive back Burnett and Bell, finally brought down by Shields. Hawk is there, close to a first down, maybe a little bit shy on the play of the first for Le'Veon Bell. It's the second time Le'Veon Bell's been able to get outside of this 3-4 defense by Dom Capers. Normally, the runners have to be able to cut it up inside. Very difficult to get outside with the wide set outside linebackers. And, of course, you get the sense that both running backs want to show well, given the words by Mike Tomlin earlier in the week comparing his running back, Le'Veon Bell, to that of Eddie Lacy. Keith Williams on the outside, and here is a... First down and 10, and the whistle blowing it dead. False start, Pittsburgh. False start, number 77, offense. Five-yard penalty, remains first down. That's the starting right tackle, Marcus Gilbert, playing with a bad ankle today for the Steelers. Of course, Mike Tomlin talked about the fact that, yeah, he would do it all over again. He would take Le'Veon Bell in the draft before Eddie Lacy. You could see Bell was taken with the 48th overall selection, 61st. Eddie Lacy as he fell in the draft to the Green Bay Packers and of course the Packers are very much elated with what Lacy has already done already topping 1,000 yards on the season. Well they really like Bell as a receiver and ironically in this particular play he's at the top of your screen wide with Roethlisberger on that quick bubble with the first and 15 Antonio Brown from behind he was hit by Burnett but the initial stop was made by Brad Jones it is again a six in the play out to the 50. And there he is. He's in motion. He's going to come over. And this is what Ben and the Pittsburgh Steelers do so well in this office. The bubble screen. Three blockers out in front. Even Heath Miller sealing the edge and allowing Antonio Brown to create yards after the catch. I don't think there's a better receiver doing that in the entire National Football League. You know, they get Spieth as a tight end. It's really helped their offense coupled uh, with his blocking coupled with Miller. Immensely blocking on the perimeter for guys like Antonio Brown and blocking in the run game for Le'Veon Bell. Second down and nine, and Roethlisberger ricochets incomplete. May have been Brown they were going for, yep, and Shields was defending. Shields had that huge interception off Romo late in the game last week in Dallas. And there you see one of those plays where I think Ben in the past would have taken off and maybe ran with that one. You can see him moving in the pocket, buying time, and just really being patient. Now watch this, he'll come back. Now he could have just taken off and run with this one. But you see, he's trying to make plays with his arm, throwing the ball down the floor. That's why I think Todd Haley has had a real positive effect on Ben Roethlisberger. The Packers have six in the secondary, third down and nine. That's Marcus Wheaton just came in, extra receiver. Delay of game, offense, five-yard penalty. Down. This crowd is loud, maybe not as loud as Seattle or Kansas City, but they can cause some problems for opposing quarterbacks. And it could cause problems for Ben in the no-huddle offense, where he has to communicate to everyone, to every guy in the huddle. You see him looking at that band, he's going to have to communicate to his offensive line, set the protection, and if he wants to change the play at the line of scrimmage, he's got to be able to communicate with his wide receivers who are lined up outside the numbers, and the crowd noise could have an effect. So with the penalty now, third down and 14. And you can see him barking out instructions. They go outside. Good block by Wheaton. Emmanuel Sanders taking it, running it. Hit out of bounds by the rookie Hyde. It is a pickup of six, shy of the first down. He gets to 
Oh, about the 47-yard line, and so the Dallas, <laughs> the Pittsburgh Steelers will have to uh, punt the ball. I was thinking about that Dallas game last week and everything that the Packers were trying to build, the confidence for their quarterback, Flynn, but just overall team confidence. The win in Dallas did so much for this ball game. And, and really the key today is to build off of that come from behind win and get off to a much faster start than they did last week in Dallas. Six plays, punt, and here it goes. Hyde, fair caught, about the 12. And Matt Flynn will come back out there for Green Bay after the 35-yard punt. The four touchdowns last week in Dallas have given Green Bay new life. Aaron Rodgers still not cleared to play for the Green Bay Packers. Yeah, he'll miss his seventh consecutive game, and the CT scan shows extraordinary risk to Aaron Rodgers' fractured collarbone. It's an organizational decision. Doctors, medical staff, the coaches, they say that it's not the right time for him to play right now, even though, Kevin, he wants to be out there. Second possession for Green Bay. Cortez Allen will wrap up the receiver, and that was grabbed by James Jones. That is a seven-yard pickup for the Packers up to the 20. Yeah, another nugget on Aaron Rodgers. Remember, his head coach, Mike McCarthy, we spoke to him. He said Aaron wants to play. He said he proved his toughness. Remember going back to 2008 when he played with that separated shoulder? said he would do anything to be out there today. Flynn will look into the Steeler nickel on second down and three. Underneath, Boykin. A little room to roll. Now I'm making the stop. That is a catch for a first down. A run after the catch of 14 yards. It's up to the Green Bay 34. And this is what Matt Flynn wanted to get done today. Wanted to get off to a good start by getting the ball out of his hands quickly and allow the receivers to make plays after the catch. Hey, With the first down and 10, James Starks has come in the game and is the running back. Boykin in, and he dropped the ball outside. Looked like Worlds had a beat on him. One thing about the Green Bay Packers in the first quarter, Solomon, only 17 points scored uh, in the games, six of them, that Aaron Rodgers has not started. So it's been a slow beginning for the Packer offense. And Mike McCarthy talked about it. He said, hey, I have to do a better job as a play caller of tailoring the plays to the skill set of Matt Flint, allowing him to get off to a better start and feeling more comfortable with our play selection. Starks remains on second down and 10. Here is Starks. Little screen pass. Good block by Lang. And leading in the other way, the center Dietrich Smith and ridden out of bounds by Clark. It is a catch and run of 23 and down to the Pittsburgh 41. And watch Starks coming out of the backfield on a screen play, running behind TJ Lang. Look at nice block there. But Starks has kind of become the forgotten man with the production brought by Eddie Lacy. But Starks is more than capable, averaging 5.3 yards per carry. And he can catch the ball coming out of the backfield, as you saw on the screen play. Only the ninth reception for him all season long. But he's doing a lot with it when he gets the ball in his hands. As we saw right there with a 23-yarder. First down and 10, Flynn. And a little high for Boyk in the coverage by Allen. For a quarterback in the wind and the snow and uncertain footing, uh, do you want to throw more? Do you want to run the ball more? It looks like Green Bay wants to get that thing in the air. Well, remember, the Pittsburgh Steelers run defense. They're one of the toughest defenses to run upon. I think you've got to be able to throw the ball outside the numbers, allow the receivers to create yards after the catch. And look at the bottom of the screen. The, the cornerbacks are playing way off the receivers, and I think you've got to allow them to create yards after making a short throw. With the five in the secondary for the Pittsburgh Steelers, second down and ten for Green Bay. Good block by Bakhtiari. Intercepted. No, it was grabbed by Jones. I think Taylor thought he had the ball. And Jones may have ripped it away. It's a gain of eight. And down to the 33. I got to see that again. It appeared wow. that Taylor had pretty good position. He did have position. Inside position. And only the clever, heady play of James Jones. Watch him come back to the ball. Look at this. And he fights and takes it away from Ike Taylor. He took it right away. And it starts. Who is grabbed high by Timmons on third and two. Picking up four. Grinding their way to the Pittsburgh Steelers 30 yard line. And I think the game plan here for Mike McCarthy is to try to spread the ball around to the wide receivers. Here's a throw right here. And Ike Taylor thought he had that one. But James Jones does an excellent job fighting for position and wrestling the ball away from Mike Taylor. Now you mentioned, do they want to run the ball? Only one rushing attempt so far for the Packers on offense. And 
six pass plays on eight, this drive. Eighth play of the drive right here, big plays. 14-yard catch and run by Boykin, 23-yard catch and run by Starks. On a drive that's started back at the Green Bay, 13. The fake to Lacey to the end zone for Boykin. And incomplete with Cortez Allen there defending for the Steelers. Cortez Allen's one of the young defenders who Mike Tomlin talked about is beginning to blossom on this defense. And this time he just gets right underneath, contests for the ball at the high point. And had Boykin been able to keep his feet there, he may have hauled that one in for a touchdown. But good defense by Cortez Allen, who's been giving up a lot of cushion for Boykin in the underneath coverage. Making his sixth start today, he and Gabe will be going back and forth at that position throughout the afternoon. Second down and ten for the Packers. It's Lacey, blocked by Evan Dietrich Smith. Tackled in the secondary by Ike Taylor and Ryan Clark. It is a run of 14 yards for Lacey to the 15 of Pittsburgh. And a player down. Just a really good play. Look, they're going to get it outside. But see, once you get out here, then he can cut it up underneath. And it's just a good read by Eddie Lacey. You don't want to go try to get to the outside. You cut back with the overflow and the pursuing at the second level of the defense. Linebackers flow over the top, cut it back underneath. In the second half last week down in Dallas, 110 yards. A player down for the Steelers. We have 6.18 to play in the first quarter from Lambeau. Defensive back Ike Taylor was the Steeler down, walked off under his own power. Tenth play at Green Bay's drive coming up, starting back at the 13, taking his place in the secondary to the Steelers' William Gaines. Inverted wishbone, Lacey, a block from Sitton, and Kuhn, and not much there. Broken up beautifully on the play by linebacker Lawrence Timmons, limiting Lacey to a gain of a yard. And one might say that the Green Bay Packers throwing the ball outside on those bubble screens to the wide receivers has really kind of spread the defense a little bit thin at the line of scrimmage for Pittsburgh. And now Mike McCarthy starting to dial up some run plays, getting the ball in the hands of Eddie Lacy, allowing him to go to work inside the red zone, where the Packers have struggled so far this season down there. Taylor is in. Boy, last week in the red zone, Flynn was smoking hot. Second down and nine. Lacy. Hold on his way down to about the six. Close to a first down. Among others, Ryan Clark down there making the stop. And we'll see if that uh, gets him the necessary yard. And Lacey at 5'11", 230 pounds. Watch him just pick his way. He's patient, and he's starting to wear out these defensive backs at the second level of the defense. He is a load coming downhill. Coming at your defensive back. But nice footwork and understanding where the soft spots are in the defense. Third down and one. Ryan Taylor is the guy in motion. Kuhn, who played at uh, a school near Pittsburgh. He was with the Steelers in 07. Shippensburg, eight-year veteran, two-yard gain, and carves out a Green Bay first down. So it's Green Bay with a first and goal, and Kuhn got it for him. And you talked about Matt Flynn last week in that game against Dallas being red hot inside the red zone where he completed seven of his nine pass attempts down there had four touchdown passes inside the red zone all hey, in the second half so i'm sure they're going to allow him to throw it down here kevin six defensive backs out there for the pittsburgh steelers first and goal from the five blocked by lacy flynn boykin touchdown they work on cortez allen a five yarder and to the welcoming party you talk about confidence here in Green Bay, playing with their fourth quarterback during the season in Matt Flynn. Watch the timing, back shoulder throw to Boykin against Cortez Allen. And if you don't get your head around as a defender, very difficult to stop that pass. Perfect timing between quarterback and receiver. Boykin with his third touchdown reception of the season. And earlier on that drive, had a catch and run for 14 along with a run of 14 by Lacey and a catch and run of 23 out of the backfield on a screen pass by running back James Starks. Crosby and 7-0 Green Bay with 4.02 to play in the first quarter. Matt Flynn signed November 12th, the fourth quarterback the Packers have used. Back in Green Bay and fantasy football fans keep the excitement going all postseason with playoff challenge now with bigger cash prizes. See rules and sign up at cbsports.com slash challenge.
Now for the Pittsburgh Steelers, who are very much alive, but a lot of things have got to happen. Baltimore, losing now, has got to lose both games. Miami, who lost earlier today, will take on the Jets, and the Jets have got to win. In San Diego, losing at least one game, and they play right now against the Oakland Raiders. All right, Mike Tomlin has done a wonderful job of really just keeping his team held together after getting off Kevin to an 0-4 start and still to have playoff hopes so deep into the season it looks like things are falling in their direction and this will be Sanders and the handoff to Felix Jones on the reverse and looking for a block and he ran into his own blocker and then was brought down after a 26 yard return Felix Jones who they traded for earlier here comes Ben Roethlisberger down by seven early the NFL on CBS is sponsored by Aflac. When you're sick or hurt, Aflac pays you cash. Find out more at Aflac.com. And by Chevrolet. Find new roads. This is the second possession for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And on first and ten, it's Bell. And he's brought down by Clay Matthews after a gain of two. He's up to the 28-yard line. Back to something you said moments ago about the Steelers. It is amazing that after an 0-4 start, here they are, uh, very much alive with two weeks to go. Absolutely. A masterful job, I think, by Mike Tomlin, keeping his team together after that horrific start. And I think the improved play of Ben Roethlisberger, he's become a much better leader, working with young, talented players on the offensive line, keeping the wide receivers together, and buying time until he got a player like Heath Miller and Matt Spade back. And now they seem to be clicking on offense. And a running game he can trust like right here. Here goes Bell into the secondary on second down and eight. And they ride him down. Burnett gets him a 22-yard burst to the Green Bay 49. Tomlin Sonny, I should say, here he is. Le'Veon Bell said that he wanted to get his first 100-yard game of his career right here today on Lambeau Field. You get the sense he came in wanting to prove his coach right after saying he would do it all over again by taking Le'Veon Bell over Eddie Lacy in the draft. Lacy was the fourth running back taken. First back taken was Cincinnati Bengal Giovanni Bernard, then came Bell. It is a first and ten for the Pittsburgh Steelers at the Green Bay 49. The block by DeCastro. And he's got separation. There goes Antonio Brown. Working on Tremont Williams down the far side. They'll put him at about the 10. It is a 38-yard catch and run first down Pittsburgh. Now watch how he hesitates at the top of the route here because see when Williams looks back, that's when he loses leverage in terms of his position to make a play on the ball against Antonio Brown. Got to give Brown a lot of credit for selling the little fake, little stutter movement to pause with Williams and get on top. Brown, 96 catch. Big plays by the Steelers on this drive from the Green Bay 13, first down and 10. Brown becomes the second leading Steeler receiver in history with that grab. Bell with the block for Beecham and broken up on the play by Hawk and others. It is a gain of three. They'll spot him at the Green Bay 10. You know, so much talk about this week with Tony Romo running only seven times against this Green Bay Packers defense in the second half after they had such a commanding lead. When you go no huddle, and these coaches, they put a lot on the quarterbacks. In this case, it's Ben Roethlisberger who's going to check to whether it's a run or a pass. Given what he sees with the defense, he's counting the numbers in the box, and that's going to dictate if he's going to either run it or throw the football. Second down and seven. It's Bell. Miller with a nice block, and there they go with Burnett around his ankles, and up high they had M.D. Jennings. It is a gain of six on the play, and Bell running hard and running well. Six carries and 49 early yards. And we asked Ben about it, said, hey, if you get a certain look from this defense, what will determine it? He said, I'm going to let the numbers dictate whether or not we're going to give the ball to Le'Veon Bell. I think he likes what he sees in the young run. Bell, third and one. He's got the first down. Corkscrewing for three near the two inside, maybe to the one. Hard-earned yards and a first and goal for the Pittsburgh Steelers. All during the offseason, Kevin, this is what the Steelers wanted. This is what Mike Tomlin wanted from his football team, the faster the team that can pound the running game. They came in today's game look at what they've done rushing the football all season long ranked 31st already 51 yards rushing early in the game bell one of the five receivers 
It's first and goal for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Good block by Gilbert. Roethlisberger, that is a touchdown. Grabbed by Emmanuel Sanders. A one-yard touchdown pass. A career-high sixth touchdown receiving. Jennings was beat, and the Steelers within a point of tying the game. Now, take a look at it, because you're going to see, here's the defensive back here, and watch them, and see what guys can keep their feet. What did Todd Haley tell us? When it, when it snows, you throw. And watch, he slips and falls down to Sam Shield, and that's how Emmanuel Sanders is able to uncover. That's why Ben wants to throw the football on a day like today. Both quarterbacks want to throw it, and they believe they can make some big plays. Sweezen will try to tie it with a second to play in the opening quarter from Lambeau. 7-7 Green Bay and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Green Bay goes up 7-zip. But Roethlisberger and Sanders and the Steelers do not blink. Emmanuel Sanders having a career year. He caught one right there, but there were some big plays on that drive. Bell ran one for 22. Antonio Brown caught one for 36 and a good-looking drive and the numbers on the ground for Bell the ensuing kickoff by Sweezen and the Pittsburgh Steelers underneath and dropped on the play and loose as it was right about the 27-yard line Carl Jeffers is our referee today here at Lambeau the end of the first quarter and grabbed by Jake Stoneburner, reserve tight end. And that's the end of the first from Green Bay. Matt Flynn has thrown a touchdown pass of five yards. And Roethlisberger has thrown a one-yard touchdown pass after a wonderful 36-yard completion to Antonio Brown. And we're tied at seven. We start the second quarter with Green Bay now moving, I think, with the wind, although it is swirled in the Flags on top of the uprights are barely moving. Nonetheless, it will appear that way first and ten. On the 27-yard line, a block by Kuhn. Inside Boykin. Dancing free and from behind, brought down. A nifty move, hit on the play by Stevenson Sylvester. A 21-yard catch Roughing and run. Roughing the passer. Number 97 defense for helmet contact with the quarterback. 15 yards will be added to the end of the play. First down. 97 is Cameron Hayward. Cameron Hayward, there you see, hit to the helmet. But look at Boykin, his ability to elude tacklers at the back end. That's something Mike Tomlin talked about, said that this is a catch-and-run offense for the Green Bay Packers. Quarterback getting the ball quickly to receivers who want to create yards after the catch. He said it was imperative for his defensive backs to be able to tackle these Packers receivers in space before they can get to the second level. Now they go into the inverted wishbone and they send Stoneburner on the move on the 37-yard line of the Pittsburgh Steelers, Eddie Lacy. Chopping his way and then hit from behind by Vince Williams, the rookie from Florida State. There's a gain of a yard. They'll take it to the 36 of Pittsburgh. And normally the Pittsburgh Steelers is a very good tackling defense. That's something they pride themselves on. But if you can't tackle these receivers for the Packers in space, and Dick LeBeau talked about it, the ability to get them on the ground, that's... The only way they're going to be able to come in here and try to beat this Packers football team today. Hey, five, seven, up. Five, seven. Matt Flynn, who played at LSU, second down and nine. Blocked by Barkley, but now they get around him, and down goes Flynn with a missile flying overhead. And that was Ike Taylor uh, coming through along with Timmons and a gain of a yard by Flynn making it as far as the 35 of Pittsburgh. Wow, that was a near decapitation. <laughs> and the quarterback can slide and save himself. And that was Timmons. Lawrence Timmons, yeah. Coming through. I hate to see what would have happened had he made contact there, Kevin. He's had at least 10 games in his career and six this season with at least 10 tackles. He's Played some terrific football, third down and eight, and as you said before, leading the team in tackles and has a sack already this afternoon. Flynn, and caught by Nelson, who is brought down by Gay and very close to a first down. Jordy Nelson, 
with a catch with a flag thrown on the play and the flag is back where the quarterback was throwing at about the 42. Well, it was Jason Worrell who came in to get a hit on Flynn. Personal foul, grabbing the face mask, number 71 offense. 15-yard penalty, repeat third down. That is the Pro Bowl left guard, Josh Sitton. Yeah, yeah he, I think he's working against, look, I think it was Worrell's coming through. There it is, 93 Worrell's coming in. And you can see him reach that hand out to grab the face mask of Jason Worrell before he laid the hit on Matt Flynn. You got to worry about Worlds. That was one of the great matchups coming in. He leads them. Worlds does in sense. He's been playing very well for this football team. Expected to be an unrestricted free agent at the end of the year. So now, third down and 23. The Packers will need the 27 yard line of the Pittsburgh Steelers, who have six in the secondary. Down he goes. Great pressure. There's the aforementioned Jason Worlds coming through, bringing him down. Second sealer sack. A loss of two right there. Green Bay has got a punt. And the coverage this time forces, as you can look and see in the all-22, forces Flynn to hold on to the ball. See, so look here. He's got nowhere to go with it. He wants to get rid of it quick. They go man-to-man -man coverage. Only John Kuhn was open at the bottom of the screen, but they wanted to go to the top, and then the pressure poured in on Flynn. Good snap here by Goo Tomaste. Deep back Antonio Brown, who had that 67-yard return against the Steelers. He finds a gap, and he breaks a tackle, and he's got a blocker. Dwyer leading the way with one block in his second, and finally the punter brings him down. He is the electrifying Antonio Brown, one of the best punt return men in the NFL. Flying downfield and coming up with a 41-yard return to the 48 of Green Bay. Snow's still in the forecast into tonight. The Packers have just allowed the longest punt return against them this season of 41 yards. And Antonio Brown authored it. So from the Green Bay 48, Roethlisberger off to the rookie bell with the first and 10 and stopped by Matthews and hit by Burnett. And spins his way for about three, just to about the 45-yard line of the Packers. Coming up in the Verizon Halftime Report, join J.B., Dan Shannon, Gomer, and Coach Bill Cowher for the latest NFL scores, news, and a good look at the playoff picture. That's coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report. San Diego is now losing. Miami lost today. The Jets won. Things beginning to fall in place. And a lot of things have got to be triggered for the Steelers to get in, including the fact they've got to win. Yeah, the Steelers know it, and the same can be said for the Green Bay Packers. It's second down and seven. That's right with Barnett. Making uh, Burnett making the stop on a gain of about five to the 40-yard line and a couple yards to go. Yeah, Green Bay's got to win today and then win in Chicago next week and to win the division. I think it's amazing for the Green Bay Packers. Remember, they went winless in the month of November, but yet they still control their own destiny. They win and they're in two games. One today against Pittsburgh and next week on the road at Chicago. Six defensive backs for the Packers. Roethlisberger facing third down and two. Le'Veon Bell hit on the play by Richardson and by Hyde. It was 28 and 33 shooting through, plugging the gap and bringing him down. Oh, it's just a great play by Hyde. See right here, Hyde is in coverage against the tight end Heath Miller. They pull Heath and he shoots right behind the tight end. Look, he gets underneath Sanders and just plays it perfectly. He and Richardson both. And that's your defensive backs getting up at the line of scrimmage. Understand how they fit in the run game and making plays. Richardson's had some neck problems. He was activated about a month ago. So the Pittsburgh Steelers squander very good beginning field position. Can't cash in on the 41-yard punt return. Here is Matt McBriar's punt, which is fair caught near the six-yard line by Micah Hyde. A 33-yard punt retrieved by number 33. Tied at seven. Everybody knows that Santa is a Steeler and Packer fan, two traditional NFL teams in the cold and snow of Lambeau and Orca Jawan. A holiday weekend. Here is Flynn on first and ten. Lacey and brought down on the play by Lawrence Timmons after a gain of four. Well, Thursday on CBS, get ready for three times the last. It's a Miller's Marathon. Will Arnett, Margot Martindale, and Bo Bridges star in TV's number one new comedy, The Millers, and it all starts Thursday, 8.37, 30 Central, after the Big Bang Theory.
Only CBS. Second down, long five. And Flynn outside, slipping as Jones. Coverage on the play by Ike Taylor with the gain of four to the 16 and to New York with James Brown. Giants in a must-win situation for the Lions. How about this, Gerald Jernigan right here, 20-yard TD reception from Eli Manning. Giants take a 10-3 lead over the Lions. Back to Kevin and Solomon. Lions lost on Monday on a 61-yard field goal at home to Baltimore. Coaching means so much in the National Football League. The Detroit Lions were in control in the NFC North with a healthy quarterback as opposed to all the other teams in the division. Great catch on a third and one. Brought down by Jones. Trilled by Clark. It's a 13-yard pickup to the 28-yard line and a Green Bay first down. And what did Jones tell us about Matt Flynn? He said Matt Flynn has never lacked for confidence. And Jones has never lacked for toughness taking his shot from Ryan Clark over the middle of the field. Jones had a touchdown reception last week in Dallas. His first touchdown reception since week five against Detroit. Then is it five consecutive passes? It's first and ten from the 29 to Green Bay and Eddie Lacy. Not a whole lot of running room right there. You see the flag to your right, and it's a gain of two, and Jason Worlds jumping on his back and bringing him down. Holding, number 74 offense. 10-yard penalty, first down. 74 is Newhouse, who has come in on this particular series for Green Bay. He's had a couple of starts. Both came in November. Now he quickly leaves. And Jason Worlds is just giving <laughs> these linemen for the Packers fits. He's knifing in underneath, getting penetration. They're holding, tugging, grabbing the face mask, doing everything they can to keep them off the quarterback or off the ball carrier. Hey, there. There. Set it up. Four in the secondary for the Pittsburgh Steelers on a first and 20 for Green Bay. Over the block of Barkley, it's caught by Lacey, who gets by Williams, then brought down by Worlds. Worlds and Timmons are all over the field today for this Pittsburgh defense, limiting Lacey to a gain of the yard. Yeah, Flynn has his sixth consecutive completion. This one's just a dump off to Lacey, using him a lot, coming out of the backfield, catching the ball. But when you rally and tackle well, as the Pittsburgh Steelers often do on defense, you limit those kind of plays to just very low gains. You take a look at the numbers of our quarterbacks and Flynn as he breaks huddles see six in the Pittsburgh secondary with a second down and 19. Yeah, he's gotten off to the good start that he wanted able to get this team down the field and into the end zone. Seventh career start today for Matt Flynn and the fourth different quarterback the Packers have had to suit up and uh, he, he comes in with a little bit of a smile here with the timeout. Kevin, both teams run the zone blitz. And let's talk about the lineage of the zone blitz defense. Remember in 1988, Dick LeBeau initiated the zone blitz to help the Bengals win an AFC championship. And then in Pittsburgh, it was Bill Cowers, 92 Pittsburgh Steelers staff with Dick LeBeau, Dom Capers, Marvin Lewis, and the starting two safeties were Carnell Lake and Darren Perry. Now, Marvin Lewis went on to help the Baltimore Ravens win a Super Bowl. And, of course, Dom Capers has helped the Packers win one. But it all starts with the architect, Dick LeBeau, some 55 years in the National Football League as a player and as a coach. And he built this great defense that's gone on to help teams win Super Bowl championships. Packers took that time out, second down and 19. And, again, they need their own 39-yard line. It's Flynn. And dropped by Jones. Polamalu was right there with the coverage, third and 19. You played under LeBeau. You played for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah, and the safeties like Troy Polamalu, Darren Perry, Carnell Lake, who are now coaching the secondaries on both teams. It, the zone blitz, Lee, it, it, this is what it allows you to do. Match up to route combinations on the back end and make big plays. You get interceptions on the back end. Dick LeBeau has understood it. He's a Hall of Fame defensive back as well. He understands that defensive backs want to make plays on the ball, but it puts all 11 defenders in play to make a play on the football. Coon at the side of the quarterback. It was six in the secondary. Third down and 19 for Flynn. Underneath he goes to Coon, who drops the ball. As you see, there was congestion. Sylvester was there. The pressure was there. And 
It's the third drop for the Packers on a very Packer-like afternoon here in Green Bay. Yeah, give credit to Dick LeBeau's defense for really figuring it out and tackling well and preventing completions where Matt Flynn had been on a roll. So six plays and punt for Green Bay with a look at Dick LeBeau. At one time, he was an assistant coach for the Green Bay Packers many years ago. Mastic. Getting it high. See, they want to get some hang time there because, oh, and it's Brown bumping into his own guy. And back there was Shamarco Thomas, a rookie, as the two collide. But again, Pittsburgh's going to get some nice beginning field position and a tie game at Lambeau. Let it snow. No, it has here in Green Bay. You see the numbers right there. Well, the second consecutive punt forced by the Pittsburgh defense of Green Bay. Here's a first and ten dropped by Bell. Jumps on. Just about ready to say the Bell has carried it ten times and picked up 60 yards. So he is on a real good run. It's second and ten for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And what weather do we have here? And everyone still comes out for the game here. Even Santa comes out to and watch the Packers play. And his elves, absolutely. Beautiful sight and scenery here at Lambeau Field today, playing in the snow, the mud, reminiscent of the days of Lombardi, isn't it? <laughs> yep, in the holiday season, what more could you want? Second down and ten. Two teams in the playoff chase. Each quarterback with a touchdown pass, and that is caught. With the defense by Williams, another grab by Brown, who has been spectacular in this first half, an 18-yard catch and a first down. Well, we saw Ben and Antonio Brown go over the top of Jermon Williams. This one is the back shoulder variety, where Brown can just work underneath. And so Williams have to just maintain leverage, try to get sight on the ball and make a play, or they're going to continue to pick on. Brown has caught three for 60 yards. He's returned a punt for 41. An elite player and a nice tackle by Richardson on the handoff to Le'Veon Bell with a gain of a yard to the Green Bay 43. You know, both of these defenses, Dick LeBeau, Pittsburgh Steelers, Dom Capers, Green Bay Packers, they use a lot of defensive backs, Kevin, in their defense, whether it's in pass defense and even to creep up to the line of scrimmage. You saw Richardson, 28, been very active today, much in the same way Troy Palomalu is and Ryan Clark is for the Steelers. These safeties will get up to the line of scrimmage and they have to make plays and almost play linebacker against the run. Couple tight ends in for Roethlisberger on a second down and nine, going deep and looking for Brown, and he had a little bit of separation. Coverage by Tremont Williams on the play, making it third down and nine. Well, Williams do a really good job. I thought he did a much better job here, just at least controlling the release. See at the line of scrimmage, able to stay on top there, and you can see Brown pulls away, but that moment of hesitation of just getting a nice jam at the line of scrimmage allowed Williams to win that battle and not allow Brown to get to the point of where the ball landed and the throw from Ben Roth. He was telling you the other day that he learned a lot from Charles Woodson in the oh, museum. Absolutely. You can see it's paid off in his career. It's third down and nine. Into the dime. Here comes Matthews and he's got Roethlisberger. Uh-oh. And that doesn't look good. No, For a it guy doesn't. who has had a history of injuries. But what did Clay tell us? He said, not only do you have to get to Ben Roethlisberger, if you see him at the top of the screen, you also have to tackle him. And remember, he's been dealing with some hand issues, but he's able to wrap him up and bring him to the ground. Can't say enough about how good a job that is. You see that wrist, that right hand? He's got the cast on it, on that thumb, but still able to get the tackle. He'll remember his 50th career sack against Ben Roethlisberger, one of the toughest quarterbacks to bring down, the McBriar punt. And the fair catch at the 12 by Micah Hyde. A 36-yarder, and down. I thought he was going to sit, there he goes. Matthews trying to... He's trying to shake it off. Shake it off. <laughs> there was a penalty flag on the play. Uh, which way? That way? Well, that way is the North Pole. The other way, uh, hold on now. <laughs> Although it feels like we're, we're at the we're North pretty Pole. pretty close, aren't we? And I grew up here. So <laughs> Prior to the kick, holding number 60 of the kicking team. That 10-yard penalty will be enforced. Replay fourth down. 60 is the long snapper, Greg Warren. 
and they continue to take a look at Matthews. Green Bay has been injury riddled as much as any team in the NFL this season. Matthews, in fact, missed some games in the middle of the year, missed four games at midseason. But his presence on the field, it's a huge one. When he's playing, this defense plays at an entirely different level because you can't block him with just one offensive tackle or one back. You really have to, I think, design a blocking scheme that's going to allow two bodies to be on. They'll punt again with McBride. And they'll get better field position here with High. Slips out of the grasp on that particular play of Will Johnson and goes ahead. Eight-yard return. They tend to Matthews. Each quarterback a touchdown pass at Lambeau. So the Packer defense has forced a couple of punts coming up for Pittsburgh and going to the locker room, Clay Matthews. They'll try to get an update. Looks like it was that already injured right thumb that he had hurt a couple months ago, actually, in early October against the Lions. Flynn, first and ten. Low and it's Jones hit by Worlds and also hit by Cortez Allen and a gain of about four on the play. Speaking of that game, week five against the Lions. Yeah, the original diagnosis was a fractured right thumb. You saw it right there as he got the sack on Matthew Stafford. And then he was taken in to the locker room there. And here it is today on the tackle at Ben Roethlisberger, wincing in pain. This Clay Matthews and had to be taken in to take a look at it. Second down, six. Jones, nice move inside and off to the races. And forced out by Clark. He was covered by Allen, who bit the fake. And a catch and run of 21 yards. And he takes it to the Pittsburgh 46 yard line. Mike Tomlin said his defensive backs would have to tackle these receivers in space. They are all pretty good at running in terms of yards after the catch. And James Jones showed us right there. Matthews, we are told, with the thumb injury as we suspected, questionable return after the Jones First catch. First timeout, Pittsburgh. Jones caught one for 21. 30-second timeout. Pittsburgh now down to two timeouts. You take a look at the respected Mike Tomlin. He and the Steelers alive and tied at seven with Green Bay. On a day with bad weather, as you can see, 10 more passes than run. Yeah, you want to throw it when you are on a snowy field. You can see the receivers are making defensive backs miss in space. Here the first and 10, Lacey. Making a miss, grinding his way into Cortez Helen. That is a hard-earned 11 for Eddie Lacey and a first down to the 35 of Pittsburgh. Both running backs are looking very good. They're looking awesome. Eddie... Lacey, look at him, getting to the second level, running behind his pads, and watch how he explodes on the would-be tackler, Cortez Allen. See, creating yards after contact, one of the best in the league at doing that. They see about six yards a carry today with a first and ten. They go outside, Jones hit by Taylor, met by Gay, and he picks up two on the play. James Jones led the NFL in touchdown receptions a season ago with 14. But only three this year. Second down and eight. A lot of that has to do with Aaron Rodgers. We talked about Aaron before watching in cities on the sideline this afternoon again. These two rookie running backs are fun to watch. Oh, they? very fun to watch. And they have the offense moving. Second down and eight. Put their fingerprints on this one are those backs. There's a nice little catch across the middle. And that's Jordy Nelson close to a first down. He picks up about eight yards on the play. He's near the 25. That's his first catch this afternoon. Jordy Nelson out of Kansas State. Well, Nelson's numbers have gone down as well without Aaron Rodgers in the lineup. But these players right now, the only numbers they care about is wins to get into the postseason. Lacey on first and 10, dancing his way and finally brought down on the play by Chris Carter. He's played some reserve linebacker all season. Another burst of 11. Each quarterback with the touchdown pass. Each team alive in the playoffs. High definition. You can see the flakes right there. Coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report from New York. JB and Company for scores, highlights, and playoff news. Next on CBS, the Verizon. Halftime Report. Seventh play of the drive. Lacey is at two 11-yard runs. The inverted wishbone. Stay in it. Stay in it. 319. 
Flynn. Lacey cuts. He's chased and here he goes and hurdles in. Fives for six. A 14-yard touchdown run by rookie Eddie Lacey. Get warm. And put your team up. Wow. That's just smart running. And watch Chris Carter, 54. Doesn't maintain leverage on the back end. And he loses contain. Eddie Lacy bounces back. And from there, he's able to springboard into the end zone. Boy, did they set that one up nicely. And it's just a good read and good footwork by Lacy to score the touchdown. As an ad, a start like this had the great second half in Dallas. Green Bay on top by seven. He had 110 second half in Dallas last week. He had two 11-yard runs and then a 14-yard run to the end zone. Well, we mentioned before that we have two of the flagship franchises in the NFL battling colorful, successful histories, Pittsburgh and the Green Bay Packers. 13 NFL championships for Green Bay. We know the Super Bowl success in the 70s for Pittsburgh. They can say Dallas is America's team all they want. To me, the fan following these two teams have and the national reputation and the following they have is second to none. These, to me, are the two right at the top of the list in the NFL. Here is Emmanuel Sanders getting a block and off to the races. He was hit from behind, grabbed on the play. The kicker couldn't get him. Finally, Ayewa got him, Victor Ayewa chasing him down. That is a 46-yard return for the Steelers. Yeah, Kevin, both teams are always showing you their championship medal. Look at this run here by Sanders. Look at the block right there. Just an excellent block. And so these two teams, they continue to fight. I mean, they're going to fight for every blade of grass, for every inch, for all 60 minutes of this football game. Steelers have the two timeouts. That is a Pittsburgh long kickoff return this season, and look where they are. The Green Bay 45. Felix Jones in the backfield. And the draw with a block by DeCastro and a block in there by Wallace. And a gain of seven on the play to the Packer 37-yard line. And we've already talked about how Mike Tomlin has his team continuing to fight. I can't tell you enough about what Mike McCarthy has done with his football team. We talked about four different quarterbacks playing, and they're still contending for a division title. Packers without Brad Jones, without Clay Matthews because of first half injury, second down and three. Miller with the first down reception. Brought down in the play by Jamari Lattimore, taking the place of one of those two linebackers out for Green Bay. It's a gain of six. It's a first down, and it goes to the Green Bay 32. Heath Miller means a lot to this offense. They can spread him out wide. He can beat safeties or linebackers in coverage and an excellent blocker in the run game. It is a first and ten. They come up the middle. Daniels got him. Ben saying, don't throw the flag. I had a guy in the area. He's so big. He's so strong. He can hold the ball up until the very last minute. He can wait for the defender to grab him. And see right there? And then now he throws it. And that's how big and how strong he is. Even with defenders draped all over him. Timeouts again to a piece. Green Bay multiple in the secondary. Second down and 10. Roethlisberger low and Jericho Cotchery got the ball right in front of the linebacker Lattimore. A gain of nine on the play to the Green Bay 23 and a timeout taken by the Pittsburgh Steelers with 40 seconds to play in the first half. With the playoff races heating up, download NFL Mobile to get live video access to exclusive premium content for your smartphone. Call Star Star NFL to download or go to NFL.com slash mobile to learn more. Message and data rates may apply. These two teams alive. A lot of things have got to happen for the Steelers. They got to continue to win, though, and obviously so does Mike McCarthy and Green Bay. They play Chicago next week, which could decide the division. Absolutely, but first both teams have to take care of business here you get the sense this one is going to come down to the wire because both teams know what's at stake and see mike tomlin got his team on the march and trying to coach him up 
for every single second and every single moment of this game. Green Bay with five in the secondary, third down and one. Bell is in, Bell slicing free and grabbed by Richardson and has the ball inside the Green Bay 15. It's a 10-yard burst. And Bell with 71 yards in the first half at Lambeau. You can't tell me the words by Mike Tomlin comparing his running backs. Didn't fire up Eddie Lacy on that last run. And also, I think it's really stoked the fires in, of course, in Bell. They didn't call time. And on first and 10, it's dropped by Cotchery in the coverage by Micah Hyde. Incomplete. Second down and 10 with 12 seconds to go. Really good coverage here. You said they're going to come out going no huddle, getting the ball over to Kachi. Good throw, but even better coverage by Micah High. Remember now, Roethlisberger takes more sacks in the red zone than any other quarterback in the NFL. Absolutely, and that's where he can't take sacks here. He's got to be able to manufacture some plays, and this is where his athleticism and ability to extend the plays really created a touchdown on his last red zone possession. From the Packer 13, second down and 10. And incomplete. More throwing it away than anything else. The coverage by Richardson. The pass intended for Antonio Brown. You can see here's Antonio Brown working against Shields. Going to work his way to the back of the end zone. And that's where you want to put it. If you're Ben Roethlisberger, you want to put it up high, only where your guy can get it or it goes out of bounds. We're going to go for three. Roethlisberger was open. Maybe one more play with six seconds to go. My chance that they think. Yeah, they could have used one of their timeouts. They got one left. Could have used it and bought themselves more time. Sweezum has made 12 consecutive field goals. A 31-yarder right here. And a timeout by Green Bay. They're two and down to one and six seconds to go. So let's step back a little bit. Both teams responding to the other. What has been a very entertaining first half. And what we're seeing from both offenses, both teams have excellent balance. I think the rookie running backs, Le'Veon Bell, Eddie Lacy, doing a wonderful job. Both close to 70 yards rushing here in the first half of the game. And then the quarterbacks are making good on all of their red zone possessions. And neither team turning it over. The running backs are sure-handed carrying the football. And the quarterbacks are making good decisions throwing it down the field. Do you think they should have gone for one more play? They got a timeout. And there were six seconds left, as we see. It would have I been very they, dicey. I, I thought they should have called a timeout after the second down play. So here's a 31-yard field goal try by Sean Sweezum. Had three field goals against the Cincinnati Bengals last Sunday night. And right down the middle, making it 14-10 at halftime and two seconds to go. So the Steelers come up with three. They were set up on the Sanders 46-yard kickoff return and a 10-yard run by Le'Veon Bell. Or they're just doing a really good conditions like this and on fields like this from a player standpoint. What are the, what are the toughest things to deal with? The snow, the wind, the footing, or all of it? I think all of it comes into play. You just have to be really diligent in terms of what you're doing and for defensive backs like Troy Polamalu, Ryan Clark, Dick LeBeau coaches it, Dom Capers the same thing. Have to keep your shoulders over your feet because you can't slip and fall down and sometimes you may have to concede a catch but you don't want them to create yards after the catch and turn it to an even bigger play. All right, this week, don't miss the show that's in a league by itself with guys who take on all 32 teams and each other with James Brown, Phil Simms, Chris Collinsworth, with the artistry of NFL Films. Inside the NFL, the show's the pros watch, Wednesday at 9, only on Showtime. The wind is picking up just a bit. The snow is steady, as you can see. And Sweezum send this line drive to the 5 and high. They'll go down wisely, and that'll take us to halftime. The rookie running backs on display. Each quarterback throwing early touchdown passes. A one-yard pass by Roethlisberger. A five-yard touchdown pass by Flynn. And then a 14-yard touchdown run by rookie Eddie Lacy moments ago. And the Packers at halftime leading the Pittsburgh Steelers. 14-10. Halftime coming up. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Kevin Harlan.
Salmon Wilcox, thanks for joining us. Some of your first half thoughts <laughs> and what has been a game that has not disappointed at all. No, it has not. Both teams, of course, trying to keep their playoff hopes alive. And what did Matt Flynn tell us that he wanted to get off to an excellent start to begin this game? And that's exactly what they did. He was able to get his team into the end zone in the first quarter, getting a touchdown toss over to Jared Boykins. But Ben Rotlerberger, he brought his team roaring back with a touchdown toss to Emmanuel Sanders and Eddie Lacy. Refused to be outdone. A 14-yard jump going right over the top and into the end zone. We've seen excellent performances from both rookie running backs. Le'Veon Bale, 71 yards. Le'Veon Bale, 71 yards rushing. Eddie Lacy, 68. So both teams are doing an excellent job of really maintaining time of possession and not turning the football over. I think it's imperative on a day like today. Bad weather. Feels a little wet, a little slippery. Both teams are protecting the football. We don't have a turnover in this game so far. So the Steelers come in having lost two of their last three, but a bigger picture, if you widen the screen, they've won four of six. Look at Matt Flynn, who goes with Ben Roethlisberger head-to-head -to -head today. There is the injury to Clay Matthews that lingers from the first half. We'll see if he returns in the second. There is the injury to the other linebacker, Brad Jones. And we'll see if he returns for the Green Bay Packers, who will kick off to begin the second half. Mason Crosby and Felix Jones, and we're underway with our third quarter in Green Bay. And hit by Jennings and ridden out of bounds, 12-yard return. And let's take a look through 30 minutes of football and what these teams have done. You know, the offenses have not had their way completely. You can see Ben Roethlisberger and the Steelers have had to punt on three of their five possessions. Did get a seven-yard drive, or should say seven-play drive for 73 yards to score a touchdown. And then on their final possession of the first half, had to settle for a field goal. So, with a couple of injured starters, Jones and Matthews, the linebackers, Jamari Lattimore, along with Andy Mulumba, who is a rookie from Eastern Michigan. And Roethlisberger with a first and ten. Quick bullet, Antonio Jones, uh, Brown makes the catch with the tackle made by Sam Shields. An 11-yard pickup for Antonio Brown. Excellent timing on this throw. Watch how Brown wins the inside position. Beats the linebacker. You can see Lattimore out of position, but Shields, nice tackle, not allowing yards after the catch by Brown. Brown, four catches and 71 yards this afternoon. He's been great and had a punt return in the first half of 41 yards. It is a first down and 10 for Roethlisberger. Moving up, buying time, dumps it off, Brown. Got a block from Bell and works his way to the sideline. He picks up six right there. Roethlisberger, Roethlisberger can extend these plays. On the previous play, look at that right there. See, Ben's wincing in pain as if he hit his hand on something. And, you know, on a cold day like today, Kevin, when you're down on the field, you could just bump your hand with the slightest of touch, and it's going to be very painful. You feel everything. You do. Second down and four. Roethlisberger had a one-yard touchdown pass earlier. Here comes Avion Bell, and there's just not a whole lot there. He does pick up three. He's near the 45, and still about a yard and a half shy of, of the first down with a tackle made by Morgan Burnett. You know, when you, when you think about what Mike Tomlin has in Roethlisberger, a quarterback who can make a play that, that uh, should be quick, extend if the receiver is not open. There's no doubt, and that's what they want. They want him to get rid of the ball quickly, but he's still allowed to use his ability to make plays. And you can see right now, it's this Packer defense making plays, stuffing the run. It was a third and one, and they don't allow anything right there at the middle of that line. They had Mike Neal, among others, making the stop. Pittsburgh has got to punt, and we just received word that Emmanuel Sanders has a knee injury and may not return for I the mean, Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah, that means Marcus Wheaton now has to step up, the rookie. And that's why they have him, and he has been improving as of late. And he only has six catches coming into this afternoon. The punt from McBride. And a fake, as you see, wanting to throw and going deep, and he's got his receiver. It's the tight end, David Paulson. And a fake and a good one. Banjo stopping 
The tight end, David Paulson, with his sixth catch of the season. He started early in the year when Heath Miller was out and comes we'll up. We'll be added to the end of the play. First down. So a penalty on Green Bay on top of the gain and a fake right there. Wow. And with playoff hopes on the line, you can see Danny Smith, special teams coordinator, smiling. He's happy. And look, he's going to come from here and then go out as they're going to roll out right there. He gets to the second level. You see him, he releases inside. Everyone thinks that others are eligible to catch the ball, and he just gets behind everyone. Just a well-designed play to get Palmer to the second level, creating a new set of downs. Paulson with the play and the catch, and Danny Smith, who's been around the league a long time, a guy that usually chomps a lot of gun, that's going to call for a new stick right in the mouth. Yeah, absolutely. Nice, <laughs> nice job. Nice call, and now threatening. With a first and ten, the Pittsburgh Steelers at the 13 of Green Bay. Again, extending the play, and Roethlisberger galloping for six! What a play by Ben Roethlisberger! That is his first rushing touchdown this season, and he's just given the Steelers a lead. We were just talking about this, Kevin. We were saying they wanted to get rid of the ball quickly. Good timing and release. But when the coverage holds up, watch how the defense breaks down and see Ben's ability to extend the play, and he just splits the defense. He catches Lattimore out of position, cuts back, and scores the touchdown. 13-yard rushing touchdown by Ben Roethlisberger has put the Pittsburgh Steelers on top by two at the extra point coming up. He's done it all. He has played some terrific football the last six games. And now 17 to 14, the Steelers with the lead. And all this began with the punter McBriar hitting the tight end on the fake punt Paulson. They picked up 30. Then Roethlisberger rumbles for the touchdown. Matt McBriar has played 10 seasons in the NFL. The punter on the right, he had never thrown a pass until right there. He was signed at midseason, replacing the original punter, Zoltan Mesko. He was let go, McBriar was signed, and he just threw a pass of 30 yards, and then Roethlisberger runs it in from 13, and the Steelers going for broke in a game where they probably figured they had nothing to lose. About four things have got to happen for them to get in, come up with a huge play, and they take the lead. Sometimes you have to be a riverboat gambler. When the playoffs are on the line, the fake punt, you throw it to the tight end, and then the late hit by Stoneburner gives them an extra 15 yards on the play, setting up the touchdown run by Ben Roethlisberger. We told you he's been doing less of this and making more plays with his arm, but with everything riding upon it, you go for broke and run it in yourself. And I three down, three down, three. So the three, Packers three, down three. for the first time. They've won two consecutive games coming in, two one-point wins, and here they go, first and 10 from the 20-yard line. Bakhtiari the block at the left tackle, sitting at the left guard, and that's going to overshoot Jones, streaking down the sideline in the coverage by the veteran Ike Taylor. Well, we told you that Matt Flynn and his offense, they got off to a really good start, had to go three and out on that first possession, then go 13 plays, 87 yards to set up their first touchdown of the game. They scored on two of their five possessions, had to punt on three, but they're running the ball very well, having excellent balance on offense. We the second down and ten. This is Lacey. The block by Lang, and you see Polamalu, and at the bottom of the pile, Ryan Clark around his ankles, and a gain of seven for Eddie Lacey, and they'll put the ball at the 27. And this is where the Steelers' defense has to be aware of Mike McCarthy's offense here in the second half. Last week against Dallas, they scored 34 points, had over 300 yards total offense in the second half of that ball game on the road. Dick LeBeau well aware of the adjustments they will have to make. Six in the secondary now for Pittsburgh, third and three. Boykin, who is hit by Cortez Allen. And we'll see if they got the first. Where's the spot? They had to get right to the 30. They pick up four. They get it by a yard. They'll move the chains. This is what you got from these Packers last week. Look at that. Five consecutive possessions to score touchdowns. And then at the end of the game, they just took a knee, Kevin. But they got red hot with Matt Flynn at quarterback for this Packers offense. Running back is James Starks on first and ten. 
And with a block by Lang, he works into the grasp of Lawrence Timmons with the gain of about four and put him at the 34-yard line. I spoke with Dick LeBeau. He told me that he felt the Packers had the best one-two punch at the running back position between Eddie Lacy and James Starks. He felt like both guys were slashers. Both can break tackles, and if you get to the second level, they can outrun your safeties to hit the home run and take it to the house. We have a second down and six for Flynn, and Starks remains. And incomplete. Whistling over the head of the double team, Nelson, on the cross. It'll be third down and six. So if Green Bay wins today, they've got to play Chicago next week at Soldier Field. And this is what these three teams that have all been near the top are looking at as we go into this final weekend of the year. And the Lions are losing by three at home to the New York Giants. And so if you're Green Bay, Chicago, you just got to take care of business. It's interesting, though, both teams have to win both games, but that's going to be impossible because they'll play one another in the final week of the season. And Chicago tonight will take on Philadelphia third and six, and here they come in another set. And a flag is thrown on the play, and this one is authored by Stevenson Sylvester. The third sack, and for Sylvester, the first for him this season. And he was questionable. Last night, talking to Mike Tomlin, they didn't know if they were going to make him inactive. They kept him alive, and he starts with a big play there. by both teams on the play, holding number 69 offense. Illegal use of hands, hands in the face, number 97 defense. Those fouls offset. Replay third down. Green Bay had sent wow. the punting unit out onto the field, so wipe away the sack, and as you heard, Carl Cheffers, they'll replay. There you see right there, there is a hand to the face. Bakhtieri had the holding on that play as well. It's actually a break for the Green Bay Packers as if the play never happened. You get third and six all over again. Temperature continues to drop here in Green Bay and Sylvester button up things once again and getting ready to go. They are having some problems on where to spot the ball. It should be at the 35 and now that is where they lay it. Clay Matthews has been ruled out for the rest of the game, re-injuring that right thumb that he injured initially week five here against Detroit. And making a play, getting a sack on Ben Roethlisberger, their only sack of the game. It's 36 for Green Bay with Coon back there. And Coon, he's got the first down. Takes him to the secondary, belted by Clark. He picks up nine, and for Kuhn, just his eighth carry of the season, but it couldn't have come at a better time, and he moves the change, and a flag is down. It was back at the 32. Looks like they're going to pick it up. Well, they are, and it just fell out of the, it just fell out of his pockets. He was trying to keep his hands warm, and when he brought his hands out... <laughs> there are a lot of hands out in pockets pocket. today, right? <laughs> First and ten. After Kuhl, and that was deflected at the line, and almost the subsequent pickoff. They got right in the grill of Flynn. It looked like it might have been Cameron Hayward. Uh, he has blossomed into a playmaker on this defense. One of the young budding stars on this defense. You can see him getting right in the passing lane of Flint. Flint's a little bit frustrated. But, you know, Mike Tomlin believed that these young players are now beginning to learn this defense and starting to make plays. Fifth play of the drive. Second down and ten for Flynn. Being chased on the play by Worlds. And incomplete, almost uncatchable for Nelson. Another flag has been tossed on the play. Say there was going to be holding on Pittsburgh on one of the pass. DBs. Holding number 93 defense. Five-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Now Worlds picks that up for the defense of the Pittsburgh Steelers. They, they, they caught him on the misdirection stuff. Check it out at the bottom of the screen. Right here as you try to get the tight end release. He's holding them because he knows that he wants to get away. And he eliminates him as a pass option for Matt Flynn. Frustrating to a guy like LeBeau. Second penalty that they've had that's taken away what could have been a good play for the defense. It is a first and ten for Flynn. They want the screen pass, and Bakhtiari got held up with his block. They were looking for Lacey. It's incomplete, and it's second and ten for Green Bay. And Ziggy Hood was applying the pressure on Matt Flynn. 
Ziggy Hood is was replacing Kiesel had been starting all three defensive line positions have named him a starter one time or another this season you can see the passing and the throwing and this could see counter but the coaches told us that with a second 10 handoff here to Lacey and Polamalu is right there and bringing him down after a gain of three I mean common sense would say day like this keep it on the ground keep it secure we've seen good running but both teams are throwing the ball well, they are going to throw the ball but you notice you're not getting a lot of throws down the field that is true <laughs> probably the biggest throw came from McBriar on the fake punt <laughs> but most of these are the short variety allowing receivers to make yards after the catch running the football and so I think you limit the potential for a turnover there. longest completion was 36 yards to Antonio Brown earlier in the game there's a third and seven that is caught and Boykin gets it down to the 39 he gets the first down by about a yard and a half he picks up nine on third and seven and the drive stays alive for Green Bay and this is where Mike McCarthy's offense I think is doing a little bit of a better job of manufacturing place quarterback staying alive I can't say enough about this offensive line and how much they've improved here in Green Bay protecting Matt Flynn so he can get the ball out of his hands allowing these receivers to break tackles and create first down from the 39 good fake and down the sideline and out of bounds with the coverage on the play by Taylor incomplete pass to Jones you're talking to Dick LeBeau he you know he was talking about Matt Flynn and kind of compared him to the Cincinnati Bengals quarterback Andy Dalton believes he's better getting the ball out of his hands very quickly on the short quick passing games but tends to struggle with accuracy throwing the ball down the field so the numbers on Flynn and here comes Lacey and a good open field tackle there by William Gaines allowing Lacey just a gain of two yards on the play on a drive that started back at the 20 Biggest play, 11-yard pass to Boykin. And a new team record beating John Brockington's number of 11.05 after he left Woody Hayes' Ohio State program back in 71. Not bad for the 61st overall pick in the draft, mm. right? <laughs> you could say the Packers have kind of hit Bader there. I think the Steelers feel the same way with that. <laughs> Absolutely. They're both happy with their selection. 13th play of the drive. It's third and seven. Incomplete. Only one catch today for Jordy Nelson. Good coverage right there by William Gade. Why? And incomplete. And as the snow is picking up, the Packers bring their punting unit on the field. It's the second time we've seen Flynn try to get the ball over to Nelson. And Gay is doing a real good job matching up in man-to-man -man coverage. You can see right there, just right in the hip pocket of Jordy Nelson, forcing the punt. Right now, Flynn's getting a little bit frustrated. Wanted more out of that possession. At the Packers are 6 of 10 on third downs this afternoon. Aided by a couple of penalties as well. Mass day. He'll send it inside the five with a great Packer bounce. Down at the two. Mass day with his 22nd punt inside the 20. A 34-yarder with some good English on it. And now the Steelers marooned deep in their own zone. Somewhere there is a mother shaking her head and <laughs> wondering why. What? I've seen a few of those running around here, though. It's, I tell you, the cold does not bother the people around here. Hawk slows down Bell, finished off by... Oh, oh and a fumble on the play! Green Bay says they've got it. There's no ruling on the field. Looked like he may have been down. This was going to talk about it. They didn't even know the ball had come out until the Packers players responded with excitement. Now they're going to talk about it. See what they decide. Really on the field as the runner's down by contact. Second down. Oh, oh. Well, that took a while. Let's see here, Kevin. Let's take a look at it. Here's Le'Veon Bell. He's just trying to get out of the end zone there. You can see everyone's just clawing and still, oh, oh, that one's going to be close. I thought I saw that ball come out before the knee hit. And there goes and the it, challenge. Yeah, right there is. <laughs> Coach McCarthy says, yeah, we'll see about that. Lattimore and Hawk were the ones with the initial hits on Le'Veon Bell. Now, remember, you need conclusive evidence to overturn the call on the field. It was ruled 
The runner was ruled down by contact before the ball Green Bay came is out. challenging the ruling on the field of the runner is down by contact. We'll review the play. Green Bay is going to challenge it. Hawk, Lattermore, and the ball is out and under review. After review, there is a reversal. The runner was not down by contact. And there was a clear recovery by the Green Bay player. It'll be first and goal for Green Bay at the three-yard line. Please set the game clock to 626. Tremont Williams recovered the ball. Wow. It's a big one. Let's see, right there. See that ball right there, Kevin? And the knee's not down yet. And that's what they saw. That was enough evidence to overturn. It's the first turnover of the game. Hawk with the initial hit. Lattermore got him up high and jarred it free. And Le'Veon Bell fumbles right there. He's had a good game so far. He's going to have to pick his head up, come back out, and show the kind of resiliency we've seen from the Pittsburgh Steelers. Right now, he needs some help from his defense to bail him out. First fumble of the season for the rookie. Raji is in. Lacey, oh, and a great defensive play coming through from the linebacker core, the rookie, Vince Williams, another tackle. It's a knockdown of two yards right there, and they push him back to about the five. And Troy Palomalo, he has a good sense for these things coming over the top. And then watch 98, watch Williams. He's able to knife through. But with so much attention having to be paid to Troy Palomalu flying over the top, it allowed Williams to detach and get penetration for the tackle in the backfield. Hey, back and forth. Lacey That's out. Right. There are multiples you see at the receivers. Second and goal at the five. Flynn throws it away. Boykin and C. Nelson covered on the play by Taylor and by Gay, respectively. Good coverage initially by the secondary members for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Flynn had nowhere to go with the ball. He's trying to show some athleticism, which the Steelers talked about, said that he's more athletic than you think. As he started to move around, the fender started to close in. I thought he made a good decision just getting rid of the football. Watch for Nelson. He's in the slot atop the screen. One of the best red zone receivers in the league. Third and goal at the five. Flynn. And looking for Corliss. The coverage by Will Allen. And now they'll have to try for three. And the Steelers do their job and hold him out of the end zone. Huge stop by the secondary members for Dick LeBeau. They did a great job of defending the goal line. You don't want to get so deep into the end zone on these pass coverage deals where you allow receivers to get in front of you to make the easy catch. They had great position, forcing Flynn to throw it away. Vince Williams led it with the first big defensive play, throwing them for a loss of two. Here is a 23-yard field goal, and it's blocked! It was blocked by the Pittsburgh Steelers. The lateral goes from Clark and then bounced around by Hood and out of bounds. And the Steelers block with a flag thrown. Wow. This is just an excellent job by the special teams. First by the defense getting the stop. And there you see the block right there. Hayward, I think it was Cameron Hayward, 97, who got his hand on the ball. Both he and McClendon were in the area. Crosby had made 23 consecutive field goals inside 40 before that. But the flag huge. As the Packers are trying to tie. And they had the ball first and goal wow. at the three. And that's just a great job by the defense to get the stop. And then by the special teams to block the field goal. That's the first, but again... We're seeing some terrific special teams engineered by Danny Smith, who's fake punt call and a long completion of 30. And more gum in there. That's right. Keep, <laughs> keep feeding it. Keep, keep getting in there. Yeah, it's right. working for him, isn't it? Crosby has not had one block since 2010. I think there's going to be a penalty on the Steelers for batting the ball forward. 
There's no foul for holding during the loose play ball, but there is a foul for illegal batting. Number 96 of the defense. That foul will be enforced from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Ziggy Hood. Yeah, that's what a lot of Steeler fans are seeing right now. Are you kidding me? Well, he batted the ball forward. And he was just trying to get it out of bounds to keep the Packers from recovering the ball. And he thought he was doing the right thing, but he batted the ball forward. Watch just 97. Yeah, see, it, it, I think it was actually yeah, well, McClendon, right? I think it might have been McClendon. He and see that bat right there. See, he hit it forward, just trying to get it out of bounds. It was a smart thing to do, but that's an illegal bat of the ball by pushing it forward and down the field. And the explanation. Which they're not going to like. And now they're going to have a conference. Maybe, maybe Mike Tomlin won his appeal. The batting of a ball, as the rule book states, is an automatic first down. And it came after the block. Tom Simmons. Well, this is a long conversation. And let's take a look at it right here. There was the pitch back. Now watch. Here's the bat. See, he pushes it forward. And they're saying that that's an illegal batting of the ball, which constitutes a first down for the Green Bay Packers. And the line judge on the left there, Tom Simonet, is the one who saw it through the flag wow. and then interrupted the conference. And they never really gained true possession of the football, Kevin, the Steelers did. I think there was one player who actually picked it up and then lateraled the ball Holding back. Holding on the field is the ball was never possessed by Pittsburgh. That's why the enforcement of the penalty is during a loose ball. It's from the previous spot, half the distance, automatic first down for Green Bay. Wow. So you were right on the possession call, and there was no clear possession, obviously, after the block. Okay, now let's take a look at it. It was blocked. If there's one player who picks up the ball and pitches it back, right here. See, now that's possession. That is possession right there. So I, I think they need to look at that because it looked like Ryan Clark had possession of the ball and tried to lateral the ball back to William Gay. Now he is challenged. And that's why he's going to challenge it because it possession did change hands after... The kick was blocked. You could see that it was a Will player who picked it up. It was William Ryan Clark Gay. who actually picked it up. And that at that point, the Steelers gained possession of the football. Right here. See, once he picks it up, it's Steelers' ball. See, he has possession, and now he pitches it back. Possession yeah. in the field of play is not a challengeable aspect of the replay. Well, it ought the to be. The field stand is called. <laughs> First down, Green Bay. Wow. <laughs> it ought to be. Carl Jeffers is getting a workout with the rule let's book. Take, let's take a look. You be the judge. And ask yourself, is Clark, look, is his knee down before he pitches it? See, his knee is down right there too, Kevin. <laughs> he certainly had possession of the ball as he looked to lateral that ball back to William Gatt. The Steelers have exhausted every avenue. First and goal, Packers at the Pittsburgh 2. Lacey, touchdown. <laughs> New life for the Green Bay Packers. They take advantage of it, regain possession of the ball. And what do they do? The smart thing, give it to your bell cow back. Eddie Lacey to power it in for a touchdown. And that's exactly what happens here. Look at Josh sitting on the kick out. Lacey underneath for six. 
Lacey with his second touchdown run today, earlier of 14 yards, that one for two. And as you can see, a team rookie record in the long, long history of Packer football. One might ask if falling in the draft really invigorated Eddie Lacy to get himself ready to do exactly what he's doing. Turn in the best rookie performance by a running back in Green Bay Packer history. Last year at Alabama, he had 17 touchdowns and over 1,300 yards on the ground. The extra point, Crosby, 21-17, Green Bay. Two teams fighting to stay alive in the playoff race. Lacey with his second rushing touchdown today. And just some housekeeping, it was McClendon, as Solomon said, who did get a hand on that kick by Crosby. He saw that the player's knee had gone down after Pittsburgh had blocked it and retrieved the ball. That was Clark. This is Felix Jones, who was tripped up on the play after a 24-yard return by reserve tight end Ryan Taylor. Let's take you to New York. Detroit knows a lot for riding, Boomer. Well, they've come out in the second half and played really well. Here goes Theo Riddick. He's going to go in from two yards out. Detroit's then going to go for two. They convert that. They take a seven-point lead, 20 to 13. 9.33 left in regulation. Kevin and Solomon. Detroit Lions trying to keep their playoff hopes alive, Kevin, after that debacle on Monday night. Boy, they had a chance. That opportunity to slip right away with Cutler out in Chicago and Rodgers out in Green Bay. They were there, and they could not grab hold on to the... Oh, and hurdling is Bell into the secondary and finally stopped at the Green Bay 42. A 25-yard return. Looking like Ronaldo Nehemiah hurdling defenders and racing for 25. Kevin, you know I like running backs who stay on the ground, but this was just too pretty to pass up. Take a look at this. We told you that he needed to gain some of that resiliency, put the ball on the ground, got the stop for his defense, but he has come out renewed. And look at that, just an incredible play by the rookie running back. Right over Morgan Burnett and Bell again, running into Wheaton. He's got over 100 yards today. It's the first time in a long time. It's a gain of three right there, and the rookie out of Michigan State claws his way for three. And look at how many games it's been since this team is at a 100-yard rusher. 23 consecutive games. Are you kidding me? The Pittsburgh Steelers team that sort of defines the ability to run the ball with great toughness, and they go out and draft a big physical back like Le'Veon Bell, and he puts an end to that. With the Packers in the nickels, second down and seven for Roethlisberger. Bell, Ramon Foster trying to lead him away, as was Baith, and the gain of a yard is all they can get, and a couple guys fall on him, including Nick Perry. Kevin, you and I, we talk about it. One thing that defines these Pittsburgh Steelers is their toughness and their resiliency. Green Bay Packers know that all too well. Brad Jones, by the way, has returned to the game for Green Bay as a linebacker. He hurt his ankle early After on. After the play was out. over, unnecessary roughness, number 90 defense for hands to the face. 15 yards will be added to the end of the play. Automatic first down. And that's B.J. Raji on that Green Bay defensive wow. line for Coach Mike McCarthy. Raji's an experienced player. He should know better than to react. He knows it's going to cost him. Now he's got that walk over to the sideline where he's going to get an earful. Take a look at it. So Whit Wallace, 72, has the first punch, and you see Raji Ooh. retaliates. Wallace actually delivered the first blow to the face of B.J. Raji. Wallace, the third different center the Pittsburgh Steelers have had to use this season with the injury to Pouncey early on, then Velasco, and now they got Wallace as their center. Third start today. First and ten for the Steelers at the Green Bay 25. Dwyer. And bulldozing his way inside the 20 to the 18. What a day for Le'Veon Bell. Yeah, some highs and lows, mostly highs. Getting to the perimeter of this Green Bay Packer defense and often to the second level. Just chewing up yardage with every single carry. And then just knifing through. This is a Lambeau leap that the Packers aren't proud of, Kevin. <laughs> this kid is running the football already over 100 yards rush. Sanders out for the game, right knee for the Pittsburgh Steelers. So they've had to go now and use more of Marcus Wheaton. He's at the top of your screen. 
wide here on this second down and three. Underneath, Dwyer. And brought down by Malumba. It is a gain of seven on the play for Jonathan Dwyer with his seventh reception of the season. Nifty little grab by mm -hmm. Dwyer in space to dig that one up and get up off the ground and still create yards after the catch, creating first oh, down. Out. It's first and ten from the 11. The 25-yard run by Bell sets him up. Roethlisberger, Spieth, Pittsburgh, touchdown. His first catch, and obviously the touchdown number one for the reserve, and currently starting tight end, Matt Spieth, an 11-yard strike, and they were working on Sean Richardson. And Richardson does the opposite of what you're supposed to do. Too deep inside the end zone, and see, watch Spieth here. He's going to get in front of him, Kevin, but you've got to defend the goal line. You can't allow Spieth at 6'7", 260 to get in front of you. That's like a big power forward coming down with a rebound. Defend the goal line in front of the receivers, and you can prevent that pass being caught by Spieth for a touchdown. Pittsburgh back on top. Third lead change today. Squeeze them with 155 to play in the third. 24-21. The Pittsburgh Steelers on his first catch of the season. A guy known more for his blocking. The tight end speed grabs a key one in the end zone. Tomlin and the Steelers back on top. And Roethlisberger, the Steeler quarterback, has had his fingerprints all over this game for Pittsburgh today. He has thrown two touchdown passes. He himself with a 13-yard touchdown run. And Spath with his first catch, what happened to be a touchdown. He's wearing some gauze right there on top of that four. It's been that kind of game in Green Bay today. The ensuing kickoff with the Steelers back on top. Micah Hyde from the goal line. And on the move. Finally brought down, hit by Sweezen, the guy that kicked off for the Pittsburgh Steelers. It's a 40-yard kickoff return by Hyde tonight on 60 Minutes. There aren't even uh, enough kids out of middle school yet to have what this guy is offering, being recruited to be Division I college quarterbacks. Meet the man developing the next Mannings. Only on 60 Minutes tonight, only CBS. Evan, the Green Bay Packers in their last two games, they have outscored their opponents 46-10 to in the second half. And Matt Flynn has been on fire in the second half of these ball games. You can see not today, at least not the second half. The only one of his last eight. Here he lines up with the first down and ten. Packers in good position. Oh, he was hit, and the ball is picked off. And there going his court, Taz Allen to the house. What a play. A 40-yard interception return by Cortez Allen. And the Steelers have gone up by nine. One of the fundamentals of the zone blitz defense, pressure leads to picks. You get any kind of pressure on the quarterback as Flynn was releasing the ball. And it looked like he actually got hit by one of his own guys. And that ball came out like a wounded duck. Watch Corliss, 81. Watch this, right there. He thought it was a run play. He makes contact with Flynn, and then there's the ball selling up, and Cortez Allen makes a play on it and returns it for a touchdown. It's his second interception of the season. Allen racing 40. Pittsburgh's third defensive touchdown this season. All pick sixes. And now the Sweezen extra point with 137 to play in the third and a 10-point Steeler lead. His first career touchdown. And what a big game to come in. So one bad break allows the Packers to get a score. This is a bad break for Green Bay. And the Pittsburgh Steelers turn it into a touchdown of their own. So we've seen both teams capitalize off bad breaks for the other team. And wow, this one is a real tough. Self-inflicted by the Green Bay Packers. As Corliss runs into his quarterback. Ball sails high. Allen picks it off and returns it for a touchdown. The Steelers have scored 14 points in the last 18 seconds. 
And now Flynn and the Packers in a very familiar position, trailing in the second half. Coming they in, ended last yeah. week to Dallas. And coming into today's game, I talked to Dick LeBeau. His team is tied for second with the fewest interceptions. Eight coming into today's game. And he told me, he says, hey, interceptions become more available when you get leads on the scoreboard. Now, that one was just kind of just the bounce of the ball, but he talks about getting a lead. They have a 10-point lead now here in the third quarter. That's when they expect to be able to get more turnovers as they turn up the pressure on the opposing quarterback. Which is Allen with his sixth start today of this season. Dick LeBeau, who has engineered so many terrific defenses over the many years he has spent in the National Football League. His defense comes into today, number 11 in the NFL. And they come up with a huge play right there with Cortez Allen getting the wobbly ball, racing 40 the other way, the third pick six by the Steeler D this season, and a 10-point lead, and here they go now with the kickoff to Micah Hyde. We've had some wild things happen in this ball game so far, Kevin. We had the block kick, first the fumble by Le'Veon Bell, and that set up the block kick by McClendon. Ziggy Hood gets an illegal batting of the ball call, even though the Steelers have possession there on the pitch back. And from there, Eddie Lacy turns it into a touchdown. And then Ben Roethlisberger, being as resilient as ever, comes back, goes right down the field, touchdown strike to Matt Spade, and then Corliss runs it to his quarterback, Flynn. Cortez Allen picks off the wobbly pass, returns it for a touchdown. Steelers open up a 10-point lead with bounces of the ball that very few can describe. It was a penalty on the play. It was holding against Green Bay while we were in the midst of that replay sequence. So it's pushed back to the 15-yard line. And it's a first and 10. Lacey will get it. The block by Boykin. He breaks a pole of tackle. And then he is brought down by Will Allen and company with a flag thrown. Hayward gets a hand on him as well on a gain of five. Holding, number 81, offense. Half the distance to the goal. Repeat first down. Andrew Corliss. Wow, Corliss. Some of these mistakes are costing your football team. That's a huge penalty. Can't say enough, though, about the nifty footwork of Eddie Lacy. 230, 5'11, can move very well at the bottom of your screen. There he is right there working against Carter. Here's the see, grabs him by the helmet right there. That's just holding. You got to keep both those hands inside when you're blocking on the perimeter. Six in the secondary for the Steelers. Green Bay first and 17. Lacey from behind wrapping him up. Sylvester. He called his name a lot. There's again the three by Lacey for Green Bay. You know, there are certain teams that just had this resiliency and that the, the oh, and that's not uh -oh. a good sign. Lacey. No. Again, they do have Starks available, but yeah, that, that's not good. You know, he's been dealing with an ankle injury. He's missed practice time over the last couple of weeks you have to wonder if he's tweaked an ankle that's already been injured that they've been nursing along for the last couple of weeks has two touchdown runs today now a second down and 14 and it starts in there in his place and coming back in low and a very tough one for Corliss the tight end third and 14 yeah that one's thrown a bit behind Corliss tough to haul that one in you can see Lacey over there dealing with the pain bothered by that ankle but you talk about the resiliency of these Steelers. I mean, Pittsburgh Steelers. I, and I even thought the Green Bay Packers found some last week in that come from behind win. But I think it's always been a model of, of the Pittsburgh Steelers. The way they played last Sunday night against the Cincinnati Bengals. I just think they now have a renewed sense of energy for their football team. Boone was in, third and 14. Flynn incomplete. Looking for breaking. Coverage on the play by Cortez Allen. Fourth down, Green Bay is going to punt. Kevin, go back take a look at the play on Lacey. Take a look at his lower legs there. He got twisted around, and you have to wonder if someone fell on that ankle as he was being twisted and turned by Sylvester right there. And see, there's some weight of some linemen. Looked like Josh Sitton fell on his lower legs as well. That's where a lot of guys get injured on that second and third effort. Especially, when they're, yeah, you know, as you're being twist and turn, and then guys are falling on. Mass day to punt, and Antonio Brown waving everybody off. And inside the 40, near the 37, 38-yard line, a 51-yard punt by Tim Mass day of Green Bay. 
Saturday, CBS Sports has an NCAA college basketball doubleheader. First, Syracuse will host Villanova. Then defending champion Louisville will take on in-state rival Kentucky. All starting at 2 Eastern on the home of the men's national championship game, CBS Sports. So now Ben Roethlisberger, who has thrown two touchdown passes, has a touchdown run, has gotten some help from his defense, has his team first and 10 at the Steeler 38. And how good has he been operating in the no huddle off and spreading them out. Now they're going to pack it in a little bit and see if they can let Le'Veon Bell eat clock with nine seconds to go in the third quarter. And Bell at 102 rushing yards today on 18 carries. First and 10, Roethlisberger. Oh, it's picked off. That is a Jayhawk coming the other way, protecting the ball, and down he goes. The Packers are still alive and kicking with a big defensive play by A.J. Hawk, their linebacker, and that is his first interception. A flag has been thrown. That's his first interception this season. And what a beauty by A.J. Hawk. And another turnover by the Pittsburgh Steelers. Well-timed by A.J. Hawk. After the interception and the play was over, unnecessary roughness, number 87 of the passing team, 15 yards will be added to the end of the return. That's the end of the third quarter. That was on Spaeth who got that touchdown pass moments ago. End of the third quarter. As the screws tighten at Lambeau, the defense getting their hands on the ball today. Steelers by 10. Roethlisberger taking a look at the pictures. He just threw a pick to linebacker A.J. Hawk of the Green Bay Packers. 10-point Packer deficit. They take over. First down and 10. At the 23 of the Pittsburgh Steelers. That's Boykin in motion. Starts in the backfield. No word yet on the injury to Lace. And a tackle made by Cameron Hayward, a gain of five by James Starks. Go back and take a look at the interception. Here's Heath Miller here. He's going to run and go over the middle of the field, and Micah Hyde is locked in man-to-man -man coverage. A.J. Hawk just drops back. He gets into the passing lane. Ben Roethlisberger never even sees him. See, he's locked in on getting the ball to Heath Miller. Never sees A.J. Hawk in the underneath coverage. He comes away with an interception. 94. Questionable return, we're just being told, and uh, Lacey, the Green Bay running back, here's a second down and six for the Packers at the 19. On the move, Flynn. Olamalu like a missile coming right at him. And the ball advanced to the 11. He picks up a first down with the run of eight. A flag is down. And that flag came down in the backfield of the Green Bay Packers. Holding, number 62 offense. 10-yard penalty. Repeat second down. The center, Evan Dietrich Smith. Wow. Just as Flynn was clearing the line, looked like Dietrich Smith right there. See him there? Right there. Just grabbed Hayward, preventing him from making the tackle on Flynn. Eliminating a really good play for the offense. Mike McCarthy's trying to dial up these plays as the penalties are racking up for both teams. And you can see he's none too happy about it. Flynn now facing second down and 16 yards to go. We're in the fourth. Green Bay needs to win and then win in Chicago next week to win the division. Flynn. And coming back, back shoulder throw. That's Jones. Allen was there near the 10, probably the 11. Wow. James Jones. Watch the sleight of hands. He's working against Cortez Allen. Watch a little push, push off right there. See there? <laughs> Just a little slight of hand there by Jones to get separation but well time between he and Matt Flynn to make that catch so it's a gain of 20 through the year hey, it's the way. first and 10 hey, over, 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 and over, over, first and goal that's the first catch by Jones in this half and here comes the running back who corkscrews starts and he takes it down to the six for a gain of three. Uh, Dick LeBeau said they had the best one-two punch between running backs Eddie Lacy and James Starks. Lacy goes out after tweaking that ankle and 
You can see Starks picking up where he left off, just keeping the offense on schedule, giving Matt Flynn and his Packers offense bounce. Saw the red zone number, second goal at the six. And the inverted wishbone starts. And a gain of two. Timmons was on top. And may have been Sylvester there at the bottom who got him. And they advanced the ball to the fourth. It's Pittsburgh Steelers defense. As long as Dick LeBeau has been coaching them, they've always been good at shutting down your run game. And every now and then you've got to do some misdirection stuff. Try to get out on the perimeter, allow your runner to get coming downhill. But you've got to get them on the run. You can't just knock them off the ball and come straight out. Coon is in. Six defensive backs for the Steelers. Third and goal at the four. Flynn for breaking the coverage by Allen. Allen did a much better job there of getting his vision inside on the ball and being able to make a play on it. Flynn just had to throw it high. He's got to do a better job, I think, of giving Boykin an opportunity to make a play on the football. Protection holds up. Three-step drop gets out of it. See, never kept that one in bounds where Boykin could make a play on it. He has to be frustrated with that toss. And the Pittsburgh Steeler defense again keeps him out of the end zone. So here is Crosby with a 22-yard field goal try. Clendon had a hand on the first one, and that baby is through. 12.04 to play. The Packers creep close down 31-24 with heavy playoff implications at Lambeau. Just about three minutes gone here in the fourth quarter. The Packers have scored 10 points off of two Pittsburgh turnovers. The Steelers had the pick six by Cortez Allen. Green Bay just got a 22-yard field goal by Crosby, and here comes the kickoff with the Pittsburgh Steelers still alive, needing some things to happen. One thing was for Miami to lose, which they did earlier today, and the Jets won. They needed that as well. And it's Jones who watches go over his head and this a lot of bounds through the end zone. Touchback to the 20-yard line. The Steelers are still alive, hard to believe, after their 0-4 start of the season. Absolutely, and now they have to win both of their remaining games and of course they need some help from baltimore miami san diego they got the help they wanted from the jets a lot of things have to fall in play but more than anything they've got a whole serve they've got to win their last two games to be able to make it happen i think it's just remarkable considering they lost their first four games of the season got off to a horrific start in the first half of the year they have cleveland next week at home and if you're joining us late, Clay Matthews hurt his thumb, which he had injured week five. He is out for the game. Avion Bell over 100 yards on the ground. Drilled on the play. And he was whacked in the play by the rookie free agent, Andy Mamluma. And a stop right there, second down and 10. Mulumba, look at him. Just getting penetration, knifing underneath. 55. Look at that. There's three Packers there along with Lattimore and others. Good run defense. Malumba, another one of those rookie free agents that Ted Thompson has signed that can tribute right away. Second down and 10 for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Bell today, 19 carries, 102 on the ground. Avion Bell, oh, and he had Malumba around his ankle and got another two or three yards and picks up six right there and takes the ball to the Pittsburgh 25. Well, you can see how explosive he is, Kevin. And I think he runs with good patience for a young running back. He's still a rookie, of course, but many of these coaches, they, they say by the time you get to this point in the schedule of your rookie season, you're no longer a rookie. They figure like you have enough games under your belt to be able to make good, heady decisions. And you can see already over 100 yards on the day for Beth. Pack with six back there in the secondary, third down and four for Roethlisberger. And off the fingertips, the coverage on the play, Hyde, intended for Antonio Brown. It's three and out. The Pittsburgh Steelers have got to punt the ball. I like this Micah Hyde. There he is, 33. See how he comes underneath the coverage there, but gets right back into position to make a play on the ball. Now, you can grab that jersey. Well, you can't hold that because you're a, you actually slowed him up. And you can see Antonio Brown saying, what is he doing? But Micah Hyde, to be such a young player, 
I think he plays like a veteran on the back end of this Green Bay Packers defense. And he's the number two punt returner in the National Football League. With the punt here by McBriar, who threw a pass and a fake earlier, which set up a touchdown. And high. And out of real estate. Sylvester. Six-yard return. 38-yard punt. They're trying to stay warm. At Lambeau. The steady hands of our CBS cameramen battling the elements today. Thank them, as always, for these great shots from historic Lambeau in Green Bay. After the punt, first and ten, starts blocked by Dietrich Smith. Tackle made by Hayward. He swerves his way up to the 48 of the Packers and a gain of six. I don't think Lacey's coming back. He's had a couple players walk over to him. Mm -hmm. He doesn't look like it. In fact, he's gaining some snow on those dreads. Yeah, and he's been shaking his head as if telling players, he, you know, the heart is willing, but sometimes the body isn't able. Ankle injury. He's had two touchdowns today, a 14-yard run by Lacey, a two-yard touchdown run. It's second down and four for the Packers. Now this means James Starks. Fester had a hand on him, and Polamalu brings him down, but he gets the first down, carving his way for five, down to the 47-yard line of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah, Eddie Lacy did leave his imprint on this football game. Two rushing touchdowns on the day, slicing and dicing his way through this Pittsburgh Steelers defense. Not easy to run upon, but the big guy has got some nifty moves, powering into the end zone. This is his first two-touchdown single-game performance of the season. Four 100 rushing yards and setting a new rookie record for the season, breaking John Brockington's record that he set back in 1971. Just got the first down. He'll offer a block and now go on and around. Here comes Flynn and he's got Jordy Nelson. From behind, William Gay ushers him out of bounds. The catch and run to the 16 of the Steelers. A 21-yard pickup. Watch Gay come all the way clear across the field, running away from William Gay. That's where Flynn finds him on the run. <laughs> Nelson's been working all day to try to get open. Finally, he's able to get one and create yards after the catch up, and, and he does very commonly. Leads the team in receiving. First down and 10. Starts. It's back against the grain. On him right there, Al Woods. It's a gain of six. Starks was the kid, you remember, a couple years ago. He's out of Buffalo, and he's had a history of injuries, and that really has slowed his progress. But in that Super Bowl season, when the Packers met the Pittsburgh Steelers, he was huge down the stretch in the playoffs and into Dallas Absolutely. in that Super Bowl. Helped them have that postseason run. Remember, they entered uh, the playoffs as a wild card team. And, and they said that this year sort of reminds them of that 2010 season. They have a running game this year, and Starks provided it during that Super Bowl run in 2010. That's right, they won in Philly, they won in Atlanta, and they won in Chicago in the NFC Championship. Second down and four. Starts knifing three, and down to the two. Big run by Starks, who has a 132-yard game week two against Washington in his pocket this year. He works his way for nine. It's Green Bay first and goal. Dick LeBeau told his defense this is the best one-two punch in the NFL. Eddie Lacy, and you see now James Starks knifing his way punishing defensive backs at the second level starks nearly 50 yards rushing so far on nine carries so he's being very impressive as eddie lacy looks on first and goal at the one coon is the lead back he gets a touchdown john coon his first rushing touchdown this season with his first leap of the year into the welcoming party and the Packers an extra point away from tying the game. If you don't think Mike McCarthy is one of the best play callers in the NFL, well, you're just not paying attention. I, I just love the way they sliced and diced their way on this possession. Look, they just handed underneath to Kuhn when all the defense expected James Starks to get the ball coming off tackle on the left side of their offensive line. Kuhn sneaks in through the back door. Great play calling, good sequencing by Mike McCarthy. Packers have had two come from behind wins this season in the fourth, including last week in Dallas to tie Crosby at 31. 
What a game. With the playoffs on the line, two historic franchises tied at 31. John Kuhn is a legend here in the Green Bay area. Eight years in the NFL, played at Chippensburg. He was waived by Pittsburgh back in 07, works his way to Green Bay. He's been a pro bowler, and he's playing a position that you don't hear about a lot in the NFL anymore, yeah. fullback. Yeah, but the good coaches know how to use a good fullback who can do everything, run, block, and catch it. Felix Jones has trouble catching it right there on the kickoff in a slip. Jarrett Bush saw that he was down, an 11-yard return. The Packers have scored 10 unanswered fourth quarter points and we are tied at 31 next sunday the nfl on cbs and the playoff push are on the same page doubleheader style all games are subject to change due to flexible scheduling check local listings beginning with jb dan coach cower shannon and boomer on the nfl today presented by southwest airlines so the last two possessions for the steelers aj hawk picked off roffersberger three and out and here comes ben Tied at 31, Bell in the backfield from his 11. Bell the block going deep and looking for Brown and the coverage on the play by Richardson. Second down and 10. Richardson and Williams, as I should say, Tremont Williams in good position, running down the sideline with Brown. And here he is right here. He's going to come try to get outside, but watch how williams just maintains leverage staying on top and just disrupt the receiver just enough so he can't get to the designated point to meet the ball we're keeping him on that outside even in sub packages and they've got five defensive backs right now not putting him inside but putting not so putting hide in the slot second down and ten neil was coming up the middle Antonio Brown with a good move on Jennings and then finally brought down by Tremont Williams chasing him from behind that's a catch and run of 28 yards for Antonio Brown wow look at Big Ben he was dead to right should have been sacked on this play but we talk about his athleticism ability to extend the play right there look he peels out finds Brown going through his progression and then Brown creates yards after the catch you can never count out Ben Roethlisberger or you can never count out these Pittsburgh Steelers first and ten Bell a block by DeCastro a block by Miller and he picks and pokes his way for four second and six for the Steelers as we take you to New York and James Brown hey Kevin and plan off the Solomon you can't count out the Cardinals and who's doing a better job coaching than Bruce Arians maybe Andy Reid I don't know how about Carson Palmer down to Michael Floyd Arizona goes on to win a big one in Seattle 17 to 10 back to Kevin and Solomon a place where I thought no visiting team would have success and I agree Bruce Arians doing a phenomenal job boomer 10 wins for the Arizona Cardinals are you kidding me none of us would have thought that coming into the season Bruce Arians the coach down there he was the coach of the year remember a year ago with Indianapolis second down and six Roethlisberger dropped Brown coverage there by Shields now third down and six what a day it's been for Antonio Brown Sally six catches 105 yards yeah this is one that got away from him should have had seven but he had slipped they had fallen down, ball thrown a little bit behind him, but nonetheless had an opportunity to catch it. Now facing third and six. They haven't been so good on the day converting their third down plays. Brown, the number two receiver in a single season in Steeler history. He's got the franchise record for yards in a season right now with his performance today. Third and six. It's the tight end Miller, who's wrapped up by Mike Neal. Spun down, shy of a first. Gain of five to the 48. He needed a little bit beyond the 49. Watch out, Neil. Big guy, 96. Reacts in space. Look at him. Gets off the block from Gilbert. Still able to close in on Heath Miller and make a tackle before he can get to the first down. Now the decision. Do you go for it? Do you punt? It's fourth and one. Time is ticking off. See the timeouts. Three apiece for both the Steelers and the Green Bay Packers. Look like they're going to use the timeout here to determine what they want to do. There you go. <laughs> He's trying to get him to pay attention. He doesn't want to get a penalty there. Say, guys, pay attention. I'm using the timeout here. Now you have to set up. What do you do here? Fourth and one. 
you have run the ball very well. And with these tight ends that they have, and I think getting back a Matt Spath and a Heath Miller really has, I think, helped their run game to improve. Now, Ben can always check out of that play and go to a bubble screen and throw it outside if he has favorable numbers on the outside to these receivers who are very good at running after the catch. And that's why I like the fact that they're going to go for it because they have multiple plays built in depending on what look they'll get from the Packers' defense. I think what Tom Moore has had to work with and quarterback Ben Roethlisberger has had protecting him six different offensive line combinations this season and losing perhaps their best lineman early in the season in Pouncey to work their way from 0-4 to find themselves on the doorstep of the playoffs but needing some things to happen and certainly a winning green back. Three different centers, are you kidding me? They're Green's sacked down. in the box here. Dwyer is in fourth and one. They converted fourth and two earlier. Roethlisberger ahead it goes to Will Johnson hurtling for the first down. Dayton Jones got a hand on him. Flag has been thrown. And they may get Antonio Brown blocking downfield before the ball was even thrown. Now they're pointing to Green Bay. Let's see if there was holding on Antonio Brown. And what a conversion this would Prior be. The pass holding number 38 defense. A penalty's decline. Mm. Result of the play, first down. Tremont Williams, and it was Will Johnson who caught his seventh pass of the season, and it came at a big time. Yeah, there's Tremont Williams right there, matched up against Antonio Brown. That's where the holding occurred. And here is the play right here. Nice pass. It's a good, well-designed play by Todd Haley to generate the first down. First and ten. Pittsburgh two timeouts. Le'Veon Bell. Not a whole lot there. And it's a gain of a yard. And I think at the bottom of the pile was Mike Neal who grabbed his ankle. And Neal is down at the 45. Yes, he is. And, and we already showed you him making some really good plays on this possession by the Steelers. With an injury timeout, we step aside. Green Bay defensive lineman who was down, Mike Neal, walked off under his own power. Pittsburgh Steelers took over on their own 11. 7-14 left. Upcoming is the eighth play of the drive. Second down and nine. They have converted a fourth and one on this drive near midfield. Packers in the fourth quarter have scored 10 on answer to come back in time. Play clock at six. Bell to Castro will lead the way. Finding his way. Malumba makes the stop on a gain of three. They'll place him at the Green Bay 42. Now you see Ben working that no huddle, having to communicate over the crowd noise. You know, not checking out of those run plays. We talk about that. Tony Romo did it so much where DeMarco Murray had 100. 34 rush yards against this Packers defense. Most of that came in the first half. I think it's important for Ben to stick with the run game, continue to give it to Le'Veon Bell, and hope he can break one against this defense. Hayton Jones has come in, the number one pick by Green Bay on the defensive line, third and a short six. Bell, short, incomplete, Hawk with the coverage. Fourth and six. Wow, Just a, I know Ben wishes he had a better throw there to Le'Veon Bell. Threw it behind him and low as you're running away from the quarterback. Those are the difficult ones to haul in when they're low and behind you as you're running away from the passer. They are going to punt. McBriar is out there and Hyde awaits inside the 10. On the field, the wind doesn't seem to be a factor. Great English. And up to the eight-yard line. Yard, well-placed punt by veteran Matt McBriar, who earlier in the game had a fake punt pass of 30 yards, which eventually led to a touchdown run of 13 yards by Ben Roethlisberger, all a part of a huge scoring third quarter for the Steelers. And now Matt Flynn comes on three minutes to go in this ball game. He kept their season alive, resuscitated it, with a 23-point come-from-behind win on the road against the Dallas Cowboys, scoring 34 points in the second half. And 
Now all they need is three. All they need is just one more point than the Pittsburgh Steelers. And eat clock and get points on the board to try to take a lead. Again, Eddie Lacy is out with the ankle injury and just something to tuck away. Crosby has hit five field goals from 50 yards or beyond this season. Had a 57-yarder against Dallas last week, but of course indoors. Flynn, crumbling pocket, and brought down by Brett Kiesel. His third sack of the season and the third sack today by the Pittsburgh Steelers and down he goes at the five it's an excellent controlled rush look they get up the field there and then Worlds you can see at the top with the Kiesel he'll just peel right back in and wait for Flynn to come to him but it was Worlds who came off the other side forcing Flynn to step up in the pocket Kiesel missing for the last five games with plantar fasciitis second down 13 for Flynn Jones. Good tackle in the open field by Ike Taylor, allowing only a gain of five, and he gets to the ten. Mike Taylor, one of the better tackling cornerbacks in the National Football League. You can see that yeah, was a, a sure tackle as you're going to see in the open field by any cornerback. Looks like they're going to let it go down to the two-minute warning, and they do, and Mike McCarthy with the decision on third and eight, tied at 31 against the Steelers. For those of you expecting to see 60 Minutes, you're watching the NFL on CBS, the game between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Green Bay Packers. Tied at 31, 60 Minutes will be seen in its entirety immediately following this game, except in the West Coast, where it'll be seen in its normally scheduled time. Two minutes, third and eight, Flynn. He got away from one. And he's getting a block, and he fumbled the ball, and Kiesel may have vacuumed it in. And it is a fumble by the quarterback, and the Steelers have picked it up. They have gotten the ball at the Green Bay 17. There's a flag down in the end zone, and Matt Flynn can only hope will it negate the costly fumble. Early on the field is the offense fumbled, the defense recovered, holding number 69 offense. That play penalty will be declined. Result of the play, first down Pittsburgh. Wow. The second Green Bay turnover, a pick six by Allen earlier, a Kiesel fumble recovery right there on a third and eight run by Matt Flynn. And the hustling Troy Palomalo. <laughs> Leave it up to him. But was his knee down, Kevin? Now let's take another look at this one before the ball. Look. There was a knee down. The whole ball, hard to determine if the ball had come out by the time the knee was down. He's Any, hit anything, by Palomalo. Anything inside two minutes, of course. It's a booth review, yeah, so there's no need to challenge by either coach. If it is a fumble, and it appears as though, with it knocked away by Palomalo, his fifth forced fumble of the season. Number one in the NFL on a career high and a timeout. Obviously a very big review here to see if Matt Flynn indeed fumbled for Green Bay on a run And if it was the Steeler offense will have it at the Green Bay 17 After review, The ruling on the field stands is called first down Pittsburgh It is a fumble by Flynn. It is his second turnover and Polamalu is the one who jarred it free and watch the left knee the right knee never touches and the ball's out by the time The left knee hits the ground Brett Kizo he scoops it up but a hustling Troy Polamalu. People talk about whether or not these defenders for this Pittsburgh Steelers defense are too old. They have four starters who are north of 31 years old. Brett Kiesel and Polamalu making plays right there. It is first and ten. Hawk wrapping his wrists and his arms around the waist of Bell on a gain of two. Green Bay had all three timeouts. And they burn one right yeah. here. It'll be second down and eight for the Steelers at the... Packer 15 season on the line. You got to use them. <laughs> you got to try to stop this clock See if you can force them to kick a field goal And once they get it you'll still have some time to work with if you're Mike McCarthy The Steelers control the third quarter with 21 points Green Bay had 10 unanswered in the fourth quarter to tie the game at 31 We've had a pick six by Cortez Allen. We've had Roethlisberger with two touchdown passes and a touchdown run Lacey has had two touchdown runs, but he's out now with an ankle, and the Packers 
waiting. Chicago will play tonight, by the way, in Philadelphia. Yeah, and the, and the Green Bay Packers needed to win both of their final games to clinch the NFC North Division title. Second down, eight, the fake the bell to the end zone for Antonio Brown and the coverage on the play by Williams, third and eight. Last couple of throws by Ben, not as accurate as we would normally see. We saw one was underthrown to Le'Veon Bell. And look, he's open there, Kevin. That was time to get that one there. And he threw it over the shoulder as opposed to putting it right on Antonio Brown. And with the incompletion, stops the clock. Stops and the Packers the clock. don't have to use a timeout. Yeah, and I think, you know, there is some wind down there. And you have to wonder if that's getting to Ben's throws as we take a look at Matt Flynn. But, you know, Ben is normally much more accurate than the last two throws we've seen from him. Pittsburgh has taken a timeout using their second with a third and eight coming up. Wow. Mike, <laughs> yeah, Mike Townley didn't want to have to burn that one. You're helping out the Green Bay Packers now because if you don't convert here, and they'll stop the clock, force you to punt, and they'll get the ball with pretty good time left on the clock. Here's what the Steelers had to do. They needed Baltimore to lose both, and Baltimore losing right now. Miami had to lose both, and they lost earlier today. In San Diego has to lose next week against Kansas City. That, of course, is assuming Pittsburgh has a win and a win to finish the season. Of course, I said punt. They're going to kick a field goal on this fourth down, but he didn't want to have to burn that timeout. You want time to tick off that clock if you can't convert here. Sweezum readying on the sideline. After the Pittsburgh timeout from the Green Bay 15-yard line, Roethlisberger third and eight. Acrobatic catch is made by Bell and on the play was Williams on a gain of five shy of the first down but to the ten and now it is fourth and three for Pittsburgh. Oh well, the key thing is that he caught it and next best thing is that he stays in bounds forcing the Packers to burn a timeout. It's interesting because in talking to Tomlin last night he said the thing that we liked about him he could run like a lot of these guys yes. can but he was such a good pass receiver and you can see he just gets him five yards closer right there for Sweezum. And he also mentioned that his guy is two years younger mm -hmm. than Eddie Lacy. And Le'Veon Bell, 21 years old, is 20 coming out of college, and he's now 21. They like the fact that he's, he's got some years left and show that he can carry the ball on every down as he did at Michigan State. Sweezum with 13 consecutive field goals made, a 28-yarder to take the lead. The holder is McBrien. The snap from Greg Warren. Mike mm. is thrown, as you saw. Movement off the right side looked like... It was fourth and three yeah. now. Now this is yes. a huge play. Looked like the Packers jumped. It was inside the neutral zone. Huge call. It was fourth and three. Defense, five oh, yards my early. goodness. Is enough for a first down. Nick wow. Perry. Nick Perry is the one that jumps. Wow. Did he say 43 or 53? I thought he said 53, but let's see. I could be wrong. There it is it right was, there. It Absolutely. was 53. It yep. was 53. And as we said, it was Nick Perry. So he jumps. And, and the fourth and three, now it is first down and goal. Yep. And he can work the clock down. Absolutely. It's just, you know, if you're going to be a playoff team, you have to be smart and be heady in every situation. To third penalty on Green Bay special teams. Bell, first and goal. Going to Castro block. Tackle by Richardson to the one. On a gain of four by Le'Veon Bell of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Great block by DeCastro. And how about Heath Miller leading up in there. And well timed by Le'Veon Bell. He's in tune to these run plays. and Hugging every single block. Taking advantage of every single inch up front. To save time, and we've seen this in Packer history, the Super Bowl against Elway and Denver, do you let them score here so you've got some time to work with? You know, and it goes against conventional wisdom, does it not? <laughs> Go ahead and let them score so you can score just to end up with the same predicament you have right now, which is a tied ball game. You may recall they let the Broncos score in that Super Bowl so yeah. that Brett Favre at that time would have time to go back and go the other way for Green Bay. How did that turn out? It did not turn out well if you were <laughs> for the Packers. 
So now at 128 and the Packers out of timeouts. Flynn, who fumbled moments ago on a third and eight run. And I think that's a good question. You know, having played for Dick LeBeau in Cincinnati and in Pittsburgh, he used to teach us, make them keep snapping the ball. He said, if you keep, make them keep snapping it, something can happen. Center quarterback exchange, fumble on the play, you never know. Second and goal at the one. Bell, and he's in for a touchdown. The Pittsburgh Steelers have scored the go-ahead. Bell with the touchdown run, a one-yard touchdown, and Pittsburgh on top with the extra point in waiting. Well, you have to wonder if that's exactly what the Packers were doing because that's the biggest hole we've seen up front in this Packers defense. Look at this. Now, look how many guys are really fighting to get off a block there. Not, not many. Mike Neal was out, and in there was Josh Boyd on that line, a rookie for the Packers. Nonetheless, Bell adds to what has been a brilliant day with 124 rushing yards, a touchdown run, and this is a career day for him. And now Sweezum will try the extra point. Packers will be without timeouts. Pittsburgh will have one. And now 38-31. Pittsburgh with 14 points off of two Green Bay turnovers. They've taken the lead as we take you to New York and James Brown. Detroit's postseason hopes right here, Boomer. While they're over, here comes Josh Brown, 45-yard field goal attempt, and it is good that New York Giants go on the road in a meaningless game for them. They win 23-20. I think that tells you how much those Giant players love their coach, Tom Coughlin. Back to Kevin Harlan and Solomon Wilcox. How about the Lions losing at home on field goals to Baltimore on a 61-yarder on Monday wow. and then today? And one might argue they were playing with house money in terms of any of the teams in the NFC North Division with a healthy quarterback in Matthew Stafford, and it's the Bears without Jay Cutler and the Packers without Aaron Rodgers who are going to vie for the division crown. If Green Bay would lose this game, they would need Chicago to lose tonight in Philadelphia thus setting up still a very meaningful game next week at Soldier Field. Yeah, how about that? New life is still there for the Green Bay Packers. But you get the sense that Mike McCarthy did allow them to score on that final play by Le'Veon Bale so he can get the ball back. Out of timeouts are the Packers with 1.25 remaining in the game. And regardless for the Philadelphia Eagles, tonight's game doesn't mean as much as next week's game against the Dallas Cowboys, which will be for the divisional title. Wow. Oh my gosh. Yeah. High, high drama in the NFL, right? <laughs> All right. Micah Hyde will get the Sweezen kickoff, and here he goes. He's being chased by Allen. He's being chased by Thomas, the rookie from Iowa. Micah Hyde takes it all the way to the 30-yard line of the Pittsburgh Steelers with 1.14 to go. No timeouts for Green Bay. No yellow on the field. It is a 71-yard kickoff return the long for the Packers this season. I told you I like this Micah Hyde. Every time he's on the field, he's making plays, whether it's in coverage and in special teams. Look at this return. He's going to fall on the ball here. One has to wonder if he has the wind knocked out of him. Because he's still on the ground, Kevin. But what a play by the rookie, Micah Hyde. And what a time now for Matt Flynn to replicate what happened a week ago in Dallas when he drove that team with his four touchdown passes to a win in Texas against the Cowboys and now with no timeouts as Hyde will walk off and Aaron Rodgers who Flynn has told you uh, that he's like an older brother and he's been so helpful in no guiding doubt. him. He talked about Aaron Rodgers saying he's my big brother in the NFL. He served as the backup to Aaron Rodgers when he first became the starter in 2008 and Aaron Rodgers has been very helpful with Matt Flynn since he returned. And Flynn said the part with his offense that he struggled with the most, Kevin, was the running game. He said, but, he, you know, he spent years trying to forget this offense playing in Seattle and then in Oakland and earlier this year in Buffalo. And now he had to come back and relearn it. Aaron Rodgers part of that process. And now with 114, looks like the strategy laid down by Mike McCarthy to allow Le'Veon Bell to score may work. Harness yourselves in. First and ten. Flynn, Nelson, a Corliss block and a 
Boykin block. Corliss was inside, blocking out someone coming in. Thus, Nelson had room to go. Yeah, watch the block here. You see 81? Watch him. He'll turn out right there, just slightly forcing a poor angle by William Gay and allowing Nelson to catch it and run with it. Nelson today with three catches and 46 yards. It is second down and three for the Packers and no timeouts. And that is caught by Corliss. Galloping, he's breaking tackles of Will Allen and takes it down to the five. Brought down by Ryan Clark. It's a 19-yard catch and run, and it's the first and goal for Green Bay. No timeouts. Let's see if they spike it or take a shot at the end zone. You see the clock. It's first and goal. Starks. Polamalu is flying through the air. He gets as far as the one. The tackle again by Allen. A gain of four. What a play by Flynn to Corliss. He's able to catch and run with it, get it inside the five-yard line. Now with clock ticking, they're going to have to take a shot throwing the football. Oh, and someone moved. It's a second yes. and goal, and it was on the right side of the Green Bay offensive line. The clock at 20 seconds. Surprised me they would run it because you have no timeouts. If you throw it and it's an incomplete, the clock stops automatically. False start, number 67, offense. Five-yard penalty. That penalty also involves a 10-second runoff. Wow. Please set the play clock to 10 seconds. And uh -oh. the clock will start on my signal. Don Barclay. There he is, 67. <laughs> Both he and TJ Lang move. Yeah, that's right what it looked like. Guard right. and right tackle. It's this second. could be the last play, Kevin. Second down and goal. You're right. They take off the 10 seconds from 20 to 10. Second and goal at the 6. Clock is running. Here it goes. Last play. Flynn. Oh, and it's incomplete. The defense by Taylor. They were going for Boykin. And the Pittsburgh Steelers have won. Yes, Pittsburgh, there, there is a Santa Claus, and wow. he has just gift-wrapped a beauty in Green Bay for you, and you are still alive. The Packers as well, still alive, but they need Chicago to lose tonight. And the penalty was costly because it looked. Now watch Nelson here. I think he had Jordy Nelson open there, and it looked like he could have, look, back in the end zone right now. There was a window in the back of that end zone to get the ball over to Jordy Nelson. The decision by Flynn was to go to Boykin on the outside. See, clock was rolling here, and he's got to go in and roll that play. Wow. What a sensational game in Green Bay today. The veteran, Ike Taylor, with the coverage. Flynn's fumble sets up the touchdown run. McBriar, the punter, on a fake punt earlier in the game. Another huge play, a 30-yard completion. What a game. And the Packers, with the loss, will drop to 7-7-1. Seven, seven and one. The Pittsburgh Steelers will go to 7-8. and eight. They have now won five of their last seven. The Steelers have won five of their last seven after beginning 0-4. A beauty in Wisconsin. Tonight on CBS, 60 Minutes, then the amazing race, The Good Wife in Elementary. For Solomon Wilcox, Kevin Harlan, so long from Lambeau Field. Happy holidays, everyone. You've been watching the NFL on CBS.